Hello, you're listening to Otaku Spirit Anime Cast. My name is Andrew, and I'm joined here with Chris. Yo! And today's episode is our spring 2023 anime season preview. It is 2023, right? Yes. It's not 2013. Tw- not 2013. <laughs> it's be an ongoing you went joke. Back, you went back and checked, didn't you? It's going to be an ongoing joke. But yes, it is already time. I know that's scary for a lot of people, especially with how crazy winter has been. Absolutely crazy. But um, it's not going to let up. I'm, I'm sad to report... <laughs> They are not letting up with how many shows are coming in spring. I, I thought that they would learn with the 66 shows they had in winter that they would chill out. They sort of chilled out. We still got like 50 shows, though. So I don't know. And maybe they can announce a ton more in the coming weeks. Typically, no. Like about this time, they've already kind of announced everything. But as per usual, everything that we're about to talk about is subject to change. Some stuff can get delayed. Some of it can get turned into shorts. Some of it can get turned... Well, there's no real shorts to really talk about in this this episode. So that's not going to be the case. But yeah, subject to change. Be aware. But yes, let's let's look at the next upcoming season. And again, I, I have to say I'm a little bit disappointing in winter. Like with how many shows, it almost felt like quali- uh, quantity over qu- quality. And I'm hoping that this next season is going to be kind of dialing that back to quantity or quality over quantity but we'll see Mm. uh we'll see well i didn't have that problem since how i didn't watch anything and again like four so shows can be caught up on next season (laughs) because it's all kind of being pushed back but and that's technically going to add a couple more to this upcoming season so it's more like probably 53 or 54 shows are going to be in this next season so rough but I'm excited for quite a few titles. There's, there's a few titles in here that I'm like, holy crap, I've been actually waiting for this for a long time. Uh, Oshinoko, <laughs> namely one of them. But yes, as per usual, we're from Takuspirit.com. That's where you can go for all of our links, social media links, Discord, ways to support us through Patreon, our tips link. All that stuff is there. We greatly appreciate everybody that supports the channel. Um, it's because of you guys that we get to do what we're doing, and it's a lot of fun. So yeah, and usual, we're at uh, the... YouTube's with youtube.com slash otaku spirit. So you can go there and sub and all that kind of good stuff. So without further ado, let's let's jump into it. Are you excited? De- definitely. <laughs> Since you lost the whole season. You I lost the whole season. You can ne- you can get the next season if, if if you don't get doubled up on your shifts like you're talking about. So yes, let, let's let's kick things off with probably the biggest uh, hype show. We, we, we Let's get the hype show out of the way. The one that everybody's going to be overhyping just like they did Chainsaw Man because MAPPA equals excellence as always but yes hell's paradise or jiko kuraku which is the edo period is nearing its end uh gabimaru a shinobi, a shinobi i almost said shinobu a shinobi formerly known as the strongest in iwagakure uh, who is n- now a death row convict is told that he will be qu- acquitted and set free if he can bring back the elixir of life from an island that is rumored to be the buddhist pure land suk oh my gosh sukhavati i'm guessing <laughs> in hopes of being of reunited with his beloved wife uh, gabi maru uh, heads to the island along with the executioner yamada uh, ase asa imon sagiri oh my gosh these names upon arriving there <laughs> they encounter other death row convicts in search for the elixir of life as well as a host of unknown creatures eerie man-made statues and the, the hermits who rule the land. Uh, can Gabi Maru find the elixir of life on this mysterious island and make it back home alive? Question mark. Yes, being done by Studio Mappa, the source is a manga, and the genres are action, adventure, mystery, supernatural. Director is Kaori Makita, who did Kakaguri Twin, and that's about all I really found of interest in the production of this, but... Yeah, um, as per usual... It's Mappa, so it, it looks really good. Visually, looks very good in animation-wise, but I don't know. I'm I'm setting my expectations. I'm, I'm chilling my expectations. I don't think I've heard as much hype on this one as I did Chainsaw Man, of course, because Chainsaw Man, y- y'all did way too much hyping of that one. I mean, it, it still turned out good. I still enjoyed Chainsaw Man, but I want to set my expectations when it comes to Mappa anymore. Yeah, it, it definitely looks good. It kind of brutal looking <laughs> um but it that's to be expected i mean we're talking about you know just pure on people killing people so yeah it it well there's demons and stuff too so yeah it, it looks pretty 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 crazy 
Very um, unique style for Mappa too. I mean, it, it looks a lot more flat than they're usually going for, but I mean, I think it's going to, probably going more for the style of the the source material. But but yeah, dev- it, it looks interesting for sure. Yeah, yeah, lots of action, lots of gore, lots of demons, lots of animation. Uh, I, I'm gonna, of course, already assume that it's gonna have some really good animation. So that's just that's just Mappa's Mappa's uh, at least goal most of the time. <laughs> Is do crazy animation, overwork their their employees or at least uh, Chinese workers, but uh, we'll see, we'll see. But that's uh, again, that's Hell's Paradise, and I think that's going to be streaming on Crunchyroll. So look forward to that. With all the Crunchyroll stuff all over the screen, I'm going to assume it's on Crunchyroll. Y- yeah, so, yeah, yeah. They they've kind of got a, an in with um with uh, Mappa, so makes sense. Now let's get into the one that Andrew is super excited about. And that is Oshinoko, 16-year-old Ai Hoshino is talented and beautiful idol who is adored by her fans. She is the personification of pure young maiden, but all that glitter is not gold. Garo Amemiya is a countryside gynecologist and a big fan of Ai. So when the pregnant idol shows up at his hospital, he is beyond bewildered. Goro promises her safe delivery. Little does he know, an encounter with a mysterious figure will result in an untimely death, or so he thought. Yes, this one being done by Studio Dogokobo. Hopefully, Dogokobo's good team. <laughs> I have not been too satisfied with Dogokobo lately. Um, I used to be a huge fan of theirs, but uh, they just had this big, long streak of just not really, really well-produced stuff. So I'm hoping with this project... They handle it with care because, yes, this is written by the great Aka Akasaka, who, of course, is the creator of Kaguya-sama Love is War. So I know his writing is extremely exceptional. Now, I'm used to his writing when it comes to comedy and romance. Not sure with this particular <laughs> setup here. It's very different. It seems like it's going to be based on the genres, drama, mystery, psychological, supernatural. So possibly going to be a very heavy heavy series despite the the cute stuff that's flashing on my screen <laughs> uh but yeah i I'm, I'm super pumped for it i've heard nothing but good things about the manga so that's that's my hope the director is going to be daisuke uh hira Mik- hiramaka who did hiramaki sorry hiramaki who did Wataten and selection project series composition by jin tanaka who did tokyo ghoul yuru camp and love live nijikasaki so pretty solid team working on it as well are you, I, I don't know if I've heard any whispers from you. I think we've talked about it a couple of times when it was being adapted, but. Yeah, it, it, I, it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, but we're going off the PV and that, that's only an indicator of them selling that they're making the show. It looks great. Um, I love the, the premise, the, the idea of, um, a idol and, debating whether or not uh they can be have a life outside of their idol stuff so that's that's absolutely f- uh, a fantastic premise and i love the idea of these i'm guessing um, i'm guessing these are the two kids they've got her eye thing going on so it, it it looks like fun i i'm very very interested in it um this is definitely one that i'm hyped for for sure yeah it's kind of one of those funny things it, it not one of those funny things but one of those aspects that it is kind of interesting is a the the idols can ne- have to be pure and cannot be touched. And if they get touched, then it's like they're impure and they're no longer popular. It is it is. I'm wondering how much it's going to touch on what is technically a very touchy subject within the idol sphere, which is the aspect of the expectations of that purity. The idol, the fans themselves, wanting them to be pure, and thus they that's like the whole joke about idols don't you know don't use a restroom. It's like that aspect of the, they are super, so pure. They're completely untouched of anything disgusting. And it's like, how will, how will it handle that stuff and what direction it will go with that? Again, I've been trying to keep as clean as possible from any information about this show. I do have one assumption that can be made just based on the PV and the, the synopsis, but I'm, I'm curious about the rest of it. What direction it's going to go and how is it going to handle this situation? is is my big question mark and like i said trying to be as 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 without information as possible i think it's going to be a really fun ride or or very dramatic ride (laughs) depending on how you look at it uh the other interesting thing that's coming from this is that they're actually going to start with an uh, hour and a half long broadcast so that probably means a good 
at least 45 minute episode starting out, which is really cool. So that's that's another kind of plus for it because it's it's typically like what is it like eight, at least eight minutes per per thirty minute bracket that you're really having with commercials and so yeah it's it's kind of quite a chunk will be taken out just from the commercials so we'll we'll see how how long the episode actually is but based from what I'm hearing people are saying that that's a good thing like the setup is going to need a good solid ninety minute episode so. Just again, don't expect an hour and a half long episode. Just it means it's a broadcast of an, an an hour and a half. So, yeah, I'm pumped. It looks great. I love the style of her. She looks fantastic. I like the eye thing. Kind of, kind of a new little thing added to it, and um, I cannot wait. So, yeah, super exciting. I I think this is easily probably my most anticipated show for next season. So. Oh really? Yep, yep. Number one. Number got one. It, got it out of the way, did you? Yes. So well, I mean, it was in the list. Downhill. It's just in the list. I, I go by any chart, and I think any chart's usually listed by popularity. So that's why the Mappa show is number one. <laughs> and all of my favorite, it, it, it's it's like the case of every season too, and it's like the season uh, winter as well. It's like all my favorite shows are like way down in the popularity list, and all of my shows that I'm like, you know, not really too into is always at the top. I'm just weird. I, I think people enjoy that. I think people like the fact that we're not always after the popular titles. So it works. Again, Oshinoko, uh, it will be on High Dive. This is, I think, I think this is like High Dive's only grab. I think there's another show, but it's like High Dive. Uh, I don't know if High Dive's getting pushed out by Crunchyroll, snagging up all the licenses and trying to drown them out, or if they're just kind of dialing back. But they got a banger with this one. Um, if if anything, they they have at least hopefully for their sake have secured a lot of subscriptions for next season just based on this show alone. So. There you go. Oshinoko. Check that out if that's interesting to you. Moving on, we have Mashal Magic and Muscles is our next one. Uh, this is a world of magic. This is a world in which magic is casually used by everyone in a deep, dark forest. In the world of magic, there's a boy who is single hand, uh, single-mindedly working out. His name is Mash Bernadette. Very interesting name. <laughs> Burn a dead. <laughs> and he has a secret. He has a secret. Oh my gosh. Mushoko Mondays. I have a habit of getting really triggered by the word secret. <laughs> it's a secret. Freaking fits. Um, he can't use magic. He meets soup. All, <laughs> all he wanted he was to live a quiet life with his family. But people suddenly start t- trying to kill him one day. And he somehow finds himself enrolled in magic school. There, he sets out his sights on becoming a divine visionary. The elite of the elite. With his, will his ripped muscles work against the best of the and brightest of the wizard's world? Uh, the curtain rises on the off-killer magical fantasy in which the power of being jacked crushes any spill. A1, um, 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 I'll pause my thoughts. A1 Pictures is a studio. The sources of manga, the genres are action, comedy, fantasy. The director is Tomoya... Uh, Tanaka, who did Engage Kiss, series composition by Yosuke uh, Kuroda, who did My Hero Academia and Grungrave. So, yeah, your thoughts before I get into it. I'm thinking this person really likes things going off of the eyes. I, I thought it was like it, I almost thought this was like from the creator of Doctor Stone. Yeah, me too. What <laughs> was that? I don't know if that's like a symbol of like their magic or something like that. And so each person has kind of a mark. And Maybe. I wonder if he makes his own just so that he looks like he's a mage or something, or he has it. But yeah, I mean, I'm. It's, it's it's an odd concept. It really is. I mean, but odd concepts are the ones that kind of pull it pull it off in a lot of cases for sure. Yeah, I think my biggest hang up is when they first announced this i had no clue about the source material or the synopsis of the source material and it sounded very dark like it sounded like i think it implied that his family was killed or something like that and so he was like out to get revenge and he was going to take down this academy and everything and then i seen the pv and i'm like wait is this the same show i heard about before because this this pv is just pure comedy so that was kind of a shock that this is not a dramatic show it's not a heavy show it's just it looks like it's just pure comedy and I don't know if that's what's kind of off-putting me is because I had that expectation and it kind of got thrown away. But I don't know. I, I think it could be good. I, I'll just have to wait until the, the series comes out. It's kind of one of those ones where I'm not really getting an indication based on the PV so far that it's a comedy that I'm that I'm laughing about. So hopefully 
it nails it. I've I've it, heard a lot of good things about the source material, so it looks like a shonen, but at the same time, it looks like some kind of a food show. So, <laughs> what the- <laughs> yeah, I don't know what it's doing. A lot of yelling characters. That's my other issue. Is it's a lot of yelling characters, and I'm not a big fan of yelling characters. So, but that's 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 Japan comedy, especially for like a shonen. Uh, demographic is just very very loud they like loud characters so we'll see we'll see uh, interesting premise the the one without magic taking down the magics but but we'll see i didn't see any actual taking down of people without magic so i don't know if how much it's even going to rely on that <laughs> but um no I, but i've seen a lot of food a lot of food yeah they, they cooked a lot of food in the trailer so there you go mashal magic and muscles check that out if that's that's interesting to you again another Crunchyroll title, so I think just assume that it's Crunchyroll unless, unless I say otherwise. <laughs> Let's move on to another show I'm pretty darn excited about, and that is Insomniac After School, or Kimi wa Hokago Insomnia. Nakami is a student, but cranky and antisocial high schooler who gets on his classmates' nerves. However, his bad attitude comes to uh, comes from the fact that he has a sleeping disorder and frequently spends nights on end without a single minute of sleep. During the preparations for the school festival, he is begrudgingly sent to the school's astronomy observatory to gather cardboard boxes, a place which is said to be haunted by the dire happenings of a now defunct astronomy club. He finds the isolated place a haven ripe for him to sleep. But while rummaging around, he stumbles upon his classmate, Magari Isaki, uh, sleeping inside a toppled over locker. Isaki, unlike him, is a personable and popular girl at class, but who also hides from her own problems of insomnia. Looking for a middle ground, they find that they are uh, there that there is comfort and ease in sleeping together. Whoa, whoa! Japan's getting <laughs> risky. <laughs> So they resort to making the, uh, to make the, I know it's not that type of sleeping together, just sleeping near each other. I know, I know, I don't know, they could, they could. Um, anyways, uh, looking I for a I see a lot of blushing, so it's definitely possible. Doki dokies. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So they resort to making the observatory their own private cubby to sleep. Have they found the comfort they're looking for? Question mark. Uh, being done by studio lead in film, sources of manga, genres are romance and slice of life. You didn't indicate that already. <laughs> Series composition by Rinta, uh, Rintaro Ika, uh, Ikeda, who did Seven Deadly Sins. So, yeah, um, I'm sold, like like super sold. Another one that I've heard uh, heard a lot of good things about the source material. Um, it's a solid looking slice of life romance. Visually, it looks really really good. Um, everything everything indicating that it's going to be a really solid solid uh, slice of life. So. And I'm I'm a, I'm a big fan of the slice of life, and we rarely ever get slice of life romance. It's always romance comedy. It's always romance something else besides slice of life. So to get a pure slice of life romance, I'm definitely I'm on board. Plus, she looks like Ochiko. She looks really cute. Mm-hmm. So she got a little bit of a cute chunking to her. So yeah, I absolutely love it. the The visuals look fantastic. The characters look just absolutely adorable. Um, so yeah, I'm absolutely on board with this. I, I, I think that the, the concept is fantastic. The drama, uh, uh, it allows for a solid drama, uh, uh, feeling going on to this and, and it being a slice of life just is the icing on the cake for me. So yeah, I'm absolutely on board with this. I can't wait for it. Insomniacs after school. Looking forward to that one. I don't know that there's been an announcement for who's streaming it. I'm kind of wondering if it's been so long now. Maybe High Dive? Maybe High Dive is going to snatch this one up? But we'll see. I hope so, because I... I or I, Disney. I, Just Disney out of nowhere. Oh, please no. <laughs> we have a Disney show this season, by the way. It's going to be a thing now. Uh. Anyways, at least we know that Netflix probably doesn't care anymore. It doesn't seem like Netflix cares about anything anymore. Except for what they do their own selves, so... Speaking of more romance... And comedy. <laughs> Here's what I was talking about earlier. It's always comedy with it. It could never just be romance. But yes, uh, loving Yamada at level 999. This one is Yamada kun to level 999 no koi wo suru. This one recently dumped Akane is just about to quit the game she used to play with her boyfriend 
when she meets Yamada in the same RPG. Yamada is a real Yamada in real life turns out to be somewhat of a legend. The only problem is he is only interested in the game. Yeah, sure. We'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> As Akane is feeling grow, will Yamada's focus stay on the game? Uh, this one being done by Studio Madhouse. Sources of manga. Genres are comedy, drama, romance. The director is Morio Asaka, who did My Love Story, Nana, and Chiafuru, so a really, really good director. A uh, series composition by Yasuhiro Nakash, Nakanishi, who did Kaguya-sama Loves War, so another solid person working on the project. So solid studio, solid director, solid series composition writer, so everything lined up good on this one, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah, I, I want to say this was supposed to be... No, this is Aniplex. So it's got to be Crunchyroll, probably. Um, for some reason, I thought this was announced by Netflix at some point. Maybe maybe I'm thinking of Aniplex Fest is where they announced it. That's probably what it was. So, Your your thoughts? She's a cute little cat girl <laughs> that likes to blow things up, apparently, in the game. She's probably super mad after breaking up with her boyfriend. There, There's... Um, and he's a dumb-looking that at- pro guy. <laughs> There's something about this that absolutely just kind of hits me on this level of I I absolutely love the concept and I really really want to see this this show I I it the the g- the characters look absolutely goofy it looks like it's going to be a lot of uh, in a lot of cases deadpan humor which I absolutely love um, so I I'm really excited about this one this one seems like it could be really fun yeah it kind of gives me vibes of recovery MMO junkie. But that was kind of more of an opposite thing where she was obsessed with the games and stuff. But it kind of gives me that vibe where it looks like it's probably going to be playing off of the two parallel stories. You know, them playing the game and them be- meeting in real life kind of thing, which I think could turn out to be really good. I-, I like the style of the game itself. It doesn't look too flat or unproduced, but at the same time, not too much. I don't know. Everything everything kind of lines up for this one. I like the style of it. It's a, it's It's a slightly unique looking style to it, but a lot more grown up. So that kind of gives me a little hope of it being a more grown-up romance story, which is kind of, again, something we don't typically get too much of. Typically, a lot of the romance stories are kids at school and, uh, you know, middle school and at most probably high school kind of age. But it's got it's got all the makings to be something really solid. So I'm, I'm actually pretty excited for it. So we'll see. Hopefully the – hopefully the, the my only concern is I'm not sure if I'm going to like the guy. I, I think it's going to probably be offset by the fact that she's going to be so, like – forward and trying to push and push and push and you're going to be rooting for her but i hope that the guy isn't too too mute annoying which could possibly be i know he's he's probably a cool guy you know you'd hope that he's a decently cool guy based on the fact that she likes him we'll see again that's loving yamada at level nine he's maxed out Let's move on. We we got to get some 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 tropey set guys in here. It's not going to be a season without these set guys. I think we have like five at least these set guys that are new, and then a couple of returning set guys. So, but yes, I got a cheat ability in a different world and became extraordinary, even in the real world. Or oh my gosh, I got, <laughs> this is the only reason I don't like these set guys is because the set guy light novels names are so freaking long. Isekai de cheat skill wo te ni shita ore wa ginjutsu sekai wo mo musuo suru level up wa jinsei wo kaite. Yay! I, I think I did it. <laughs> uh, that's partly why people will listen to this podcast is they love to hear me butcher names. I'm But I'm getting better anymore, so now nobody has anything to make fun of anymore. But they still make fun of me messing up the synopsis. A mysterious door stands open, inviting a boy who's been brutally bullied all his life to take a courageous step toward forward into the unknown. On the other side, he finds a horde of priceless artifacts and a world as filled with magic as it is with monsters. The most shocking revelation, however, is that he can bring whatever he wants back with him when he returns to Earth. It won't be long before the double life changes him forever. The studio is Millipinzi, which isn't a really great studio. Uh, sources of light novel. <laughs> Genres are action, adventure, fantasy, romance. Director is Shin Itagaki, who did Spider So What, New Berserk, the New Berserk series, and Copcraft. So that's not another, that's another oof. <laughs> and the original creator is Miku, who created Fruit of Evolution. Another oof. 
<laughs> Everything I looked into with the show gives me no hope for the show whatsoever. As much as it's got a very, um, a very airbrush unique style to it, I don't know. Chris, what do you think? <sighs> give, it, give it some hope it, because Andrew's sounding pretty negative right now. When we talked about, it, did, was it on a, on on podcast that we talked about this? Yeah, I, and I I was I I, I love that I it, it looks like it's gonna be a super edge boy type show. I it, it, I get no kick. I, I get a absolute kick out of that. But the freaking eyes, everything about this looks fantastic. I I'm just like, man, this looks so cool. But yeah, I to to absolutely echo what Andrew said. The nothing about what what they have uh lined up on this is like um give me something to work with i mean give me a give me a composer at least i can say the music looks it sounds good but no all i got is the freaking eyes look crazy awesome and i love the artwork and the the style and everything like that but but yeah nothing gives me any hope for it <laughs> yeah i think the only thing good they've done is probably um tq like other than that, it's like Copcraft, the new Berserk series. It's all CGI. Uh, Spider So What, which is again was mostly CGI. Whatever two D they had was barely moving. It's it's one of those kind of it's one of those cases where the PB looks solid. It's got a great style to it. It's very visually lush. Again, it's got a very airbrush style to it. It's got some great animation beats in there. But at the same time, I wonder how much of what's outside of the animation is just steals with some sort of effect on it. And it's that that two thing we we say every time this could be Millipin's first big breakout. Maybe they finally got the budget they need. They're going to break out with something insane, or it's a really well produced PB and the show is going to be garbage. That's my biggest concern. And again, having the entire team has produced terrible things before, and I'm not a huge fan of the comedy and Fruit of Evolution. This looks like it's going to be more serious, so I don't think it's going to go for something like Fruit of Evolution. But it could have some comedy beats in there. And if it does, it's probably going to be very similar to that kind of what I would call like a very potty humor type of humor that Fruit of Evolution had. At least based on the four or five episodes I watched of the first season. Based on that. Um, I don't know. The the story itself, the setup, again, it kind of indicates this idea that he's this, you know, tubby guy that was bullied. He goes to this other world, you know, beefs up and then comes back to his previous world. And suddenly everybody's on top of him. Like, oh, now he's suddenly hot and he's got and he's probably going to be liking him because maybe he, they're going to know that he has something that he's get, brought with him. So this is going to be what I think could possibly be the first of what I think are two, quote unquote, revenge set guys. This idea of somebody that is was beat down and then comes back and gets revenge. So but we'll see. But at the same time. I'm going to set my expectations for this show at zero because I don't trust the studio and I don't trust this team. So, and I don't trust the creator, but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see again. I, I agree with Chris, the, the girls, the styles and stuff look gorgeous, but it's a PV. <laughs> it's a PV. <laughs> they're going to look, make it look gorgeous. I mean, I've seen PVs where it's like, holy crap, they're not even trying to sell this. Are you? <laughs> but yeah. That's a, I got a cheetah ability in a different world and became extraordinary even in the real world. Check that out if that's at all interesting to you. Let's jump into some more romance. Like, gosh, dang, this season is romance, romance, romance. And I'm I'm not against it. I'm not against it. But yes, uh, the dr the dangers in my heart or Boku no Kokoro no yab Yabai Yatsu. This one is fascinated by murder and all things horror. Kyotaro's daydreaming of acting out his twisted fantasies on his unsuspected classmates. But an encounter with Anna Yamada, a gorgeous class idol, uh, lights a spark in the darkness of his heart. It's a classic tale of antisocial boy falling for a popular girl. But neither are who they appear to be at first glance. Will Kyotaro and Anna defy their expectations of each other? And of themselves. What do you think is going to be her thing? Or did it show in the trailer and I missed it? I think I've seen a uh, bite mark on her neck. A bite mark on her neck? Yeah. It was towards the beginning. It looked like she had a couple of uh, fang marks on her neck. So is she a vampire? Or do you think that one, she's self-inflicted or a I, hickey? I don't know. 
I mean, I it might have just been one of those things. Yeah, I do see the as, two mark. Or is it mole? It might be moles. Could be moles. I don't know. It 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 sounds goofy. I love it. I I'm I'm super super fun. Uh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, there's a lot of impl- there's a lot of things implied in the trailer. I wonder if she died and was turned to a vampire to save her life. They showed a bike get hit. I don't know. It could be his imagination because again he has this imagination of everything dark. So yeah. it's like I don't know what is his imagination or what is the story. It does show the picture that he drew of her had a a, a collar on, and typically they put those like very flat collars on when they have a bite mark coming might, up. Yeah, it so might. She be, could be a vampire. It might just be flat out. Uh, totally uh top bottom let's just say it nicely like that <laughs> very very curious i wonder how dark they'll get into the aspect of what they kind of imply in this the synopsis makes it very dark implied of what he thinks about his classmates it's it's kind of going down the route of like this is was this kid going to do something really terrible to the school if they left him alone <laughs> i don't know i wonder if those are bite marks it's, they got to be moles they've got to be moles yeah they're but they they are very I mean, they're, some of the shots they're they're close, and some they're far away. I don't know. We'll could see, but uh, yeah, she's definitely cute. We'll <laughs> we'll see if it turns out. I'm, I'll be curious to see what her secret is going to be. I, I was kind of wondering at, at first. I was assuming it was going to be one of those cases where she is she sees the world very dark, and she he sees it very. Or he sees the world very dark. She sees the world very light. But then the reverse is actually the case when they start to meet each other. She wants to see it. She sees it dark. And he thinks that she wants to see it light. I explained it terribly. Sorry. It definitely looks like she has a thing with biting. So because they're 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 focusing on her eating some food in one in in a couple of the shots too. Got to be a vampire. Got to be a vampire. It's only comedy romance slice of life. So unless they're hiding the genre, I don't know. Typically, if if it turns out that she would be a vampire, they would have supernatural in there at least. So. I'll be curious to see how that one turns out. It, it definitely piqued my interest. I I had kind of a slight interest in this show, but no, I'm kind of interested in what the hell's going on. Uh, but yes, uh, that's uh, the dangers in my heart. That's going to be a high dive. There's a second one. They have two. <laughs> high dive has two shows. So yay. <laughs> Keep it up. Gambare high dive chan. <laughs> Gambare high dive chan. Uh, moving on. Why Ryleza? No, I, I said that completely wrong. Wow. Raliana. Why Raliana ended up in the Duke's mansion? Konojo ga kyo shaku te ni ita riru. This one after a mysterious death. Park Iuna. Unha. Park Unha. What kind of name? Park Unha. Enters the world of a novel. She is revived as a minor character. Raliana McMillian. McMillan who is to be poisoned to death by her own betrothed. In order to break up with her dangerous fiancé, she offers a serendipitous... Serendipitous... What in the world name is that? Serendipitous. I don't think I've ever seen that word in my entire life. This this can't be a word. I, I swear this is not a word. Yeah, well, serendipity it sounds like it should be there. Oh, I don't have the volume up. Surreptitious? What? Surreptitious? I don't think I've ever seen the word surreptitious in my entire life. I that's a lie. That is an absolute lie. Anyways, uh basically a deal to keep a secret. Um to the male protagonist of the novel. Noah Wine Knight. But winds up romantically, uh, romantically with other men that are not part of the plan. And Noah Wine Knight is inescapably inescapable, but suspicious charm. Honest Justin Shamal, who loves only one person, or Adam Taylor, <laughs> Adam Taylor, Adam Taylor, <laughs> for whom you have a soft spot for no. Re- for whom you have a soft spot for no reason whenever you see him. Okay, okay, it's, it's given a third person. Anyways, uh, Will Raliana, this is a bad synopsis reading. Will Raliana successfully get out of this crisis and create a new ending for herself? Who will be the one that will join Raliana in her new ending? Yes, it's our, it's our Isekai villainous story. It's going to be every season now. Just expect it. 
assume it's going to be here. And this is it. We have it. It's right here. Being done by Studio Typhoon Graphics. Uh, sources of manga, genres are comedy, fantasy, mysteries, romance. Director Junichi Yamamoto, who did More Than a Married Couple. Series composition by Mitsutaka Hirota, who did Rent a Girlfriend, Bibliophile Princess. And this will be on Crunchyroll. What do you think? Now that we've side tangent with my terrible synopsis reading. Mm-hmm. It, it sounds it sounds interesting. I, I absolutely love the Atome game uh, stories. So it it just... I have yet to find one that I haven't enjoyed in some way, shape, or form. So super excited about this one. Uh, love the concept of the uh, background character trying to avoid her own death. Um, so yeah, it, it definitely looks interesting. Um, I absolutely love the artwork. Um, yeah, for sure. Definitely excited about it. Yeah, I'll be curious what the, what deal she makes with the, the male lead. Um, it, it kind of... Im- my assumption is it sort of it implies the idea that she could be possibly telling him, like, look, I know what you're going to be doing here soon because she knows how the story goes. And maybe that kind of not wanting that information out kind of shocked him. But usually when you have that kind of stuff, it ends up with your death. <laughs> if you have a secret that they don't want you to know, that's kind of a bad thing. But, yeah, I'm, I'm on the same boat with Chris. I'm not burnt out by uh, villainous stories. I've yet to really run into one that I didn't enjoy. I mean, even with the one, what was it, the the taming the final boss it kind of got really rough like in that second arc but overall i enjoyed it even a tome game as tough for mobs was, was solid as well even though it wasn't from the perspective of the villainous it was kind of the same concept but i don't know we'll see uh, nothing really tr- nothing about the story so far with well, the synopsis and the, the the pv says holy crap this is going to be really interesting because we're going to do this so we'll see but i don't know We'll see with it, but yeah, that's why Rayliana ended up with the Duke's Mansion. Check that out, if that's interesting to you. Moving on, more romance comedy. Just, again, this is the season of romance. This is the season of romance. Uh, some doki dokies. Love is in the air for spring. They're putting like five five years worth of romances all at one, one they've, been, they've been holding on to it. They've been <laughs> keeping it to themselves. Uh, but yeah, this is one that we've been kind of seeing for a long time now. I think the original key art that we've seen, I, origi- I originally thought it was going to be like some spinoff to <laughs> All Noah Zero because of the main girl. But no, The Galaxy Next Door, or Otonari, Otonari ni Ginga. This one is ever since her father, ever since their father died, uh, Ichiro Koga, Kuga has struggled to support his two younger siblings on nothing more than a small inheritance and his passion for drawing manga. But it's becoming harder to keep up with the growing responsibility and deadlines, especially after his last two assistants quit to follow their dreams. Just as he's nearing his breaking point, the beautiful and scarily, scarily comp- uh, competent Shiori Goshiki applies to become his new assistant. But there's something almost otherworldly about Goshiki. And soon Kuga finds his reality turned upside down when she suddenly declares them engaged to marry okay <laughs> moving a little quick baby girl okay <laughs> okay father made a deal with an otherworldly girl anyways uh studio is asahi productions uh source is a manga and jamas are comedy romance the director is ryuchi kimura who did I- aikatsu a lot of aikatsu actually and series composition by gige oh my gosh giga emon Ichikawa, who did Fruit of Evolution. God, that name's creeping up again. <laughs> Do anything Fruit of Evolution jumping up at me. And yes, the big shock that I think I found with this one is that the original creator is Guido Amagakure, who did Sweetness and Lightning. Sold. There you go. I figured that would be a, a pretty easy one for Chris. Yeah, absolutely like, don't care. sold. I, it's sold like, a million times over. But then uh, also... Uh, Jenner Bucci is going to be pinning this script for the series, and <laughs> everybody will goes die back first. in the trash. <laughs> it's just a joke. It's a joke, everybody. I'm like what? That's not true. Um, anyways, visually it looks good. I really love the style of the the, the main girl. So um, definitely doki dokies all around. The premise and everything kind of set up is okay. I, the, I will admit, there's nothing like here well, story that, wise that's got a hook. Yeah, it's that, just it looks like a setup of a romance that could possibly be very interesting, very heartwarming, or it could flop. But we'll see. 
that and that, that's absolutely where I was at. I was like, uh, nothing really catching me. I mean, I really wanted a good solid romance, but it's not really doing anything. I seen the two kids and that and that that absolutely sets up for some absolutely adorable stuff, but nothing was really catching me outside of the kids. I mean, um, I think I, that's I, probably I, the only to, hook is the idea that you do have it's not really portraying it very well with the synopsis, but the concept of how hard they can hit heavy on the idea of he's at the end of his rope. He wants to take care of his siblings. He's doing everything he can to support them, and he's about to break. And then she's going to come in and make everything perfect. She's going to be the, into place, the yeah. perfect thing that he needs to fi- kind of fix everything. And even when she does admit that, you know, hey, we're married, it's going to be like, he's probably going to do, what? We can't do that. But it's going to be like an aspect of, dude, She's giving you everything you need. <laughs> Why would you not be okay with her? The, but yeah, the the fact that there's sweetness and lightning invo- uh, uh, creator is involved. That like because I I absolutely loved the heartwarming nature of that show, and I really really, I mean, if you go back and listen to when we did the review on it, I was absolutely just enthralled by that show. So having that in in this this situation where it's kind of a a guy who's just kind of at his rope and he has these two younger siblings and this person is just falling into his his life at the at just the right time is absolutely fantastic and I cannot wait for this this one of the top two that I'm thinking of so far that I'm I'm excited about for sure could not be because of sweetness and lightning completely it's absolutely separate. because of the sweetness and lightning I'm not lying one well, bit okay so obviously implied galaxy next door and otherworldly and eyes glowing by the stars. Do you think she's actually going to be an alien? Uh, I think it's possible. Or you think it's being I don't. I, I I think it's going to be more of a metaphorical because I mean the the entire I mean the idea that I can get out of this is this woman who has everything together and women are confusing and, and and interesting and they open up your life and i i can see that absolutely she's being foreign. a metaphorical thing she's foreign but she could unobtainable yeah she's she's foreign because she's a blonde um so, <laughs> <laughs> besides that besides that <laughs> but yeah yeah um it, it's very possible that that she could be an alien but i i don't i don't think that they're gonna go that far out of out of the always crazy. watching him and knowing that he's suffering from above and then decides to come down and help him out she was observing earth and seeing him as a as an option we'll see though i'm i'm, I'm excited for it i'm, I'm on board with it so i can least next door it's like a solid solid one the only kind of bad thing is it doesn't have a slice of life listing i wonder if somewhere else they list his slice of life because rom-com doesn't look too funny from the PV, honestly. So, I don't know. Maybe the other PVs will be a lot more com- comedic. Maybe this one's trying to focus more on this, the romance and the story aspect. So, we'll see. Moving on. Let's get a little dark. Chris has got enough fluffy stuff. It's time to get dark, Chris. It's time to get dark. My home hero, Tetsuo Tosu, an ordinary salaryman, discovers his daughter, Reika, has been physically abused by her boyfriend, Matori Nobuto, Nobuto. Trying to learn more about him, Tetsuo uncovers Matori's scheme to extort money from Reika's wealthy grandparents and finds out that he is a member of a crime syndicate with a history of murdering his girlfriend, his former girlfriends, filled with hit rage and fear at the thought of Reika being in danger. Tetsuo ends up killing Nobuto and, with the help of his wife, Kasen, successfully disposes of the body. Now, as the members of the syndicate begin to question Nobuto's sudden disappearance, Tetsuo and Kasen must work together to ensure the safety of their daughter and prevent her from getting involved in the uh, predicament any further. This one sounds like it's going to be a little heavy. (laughs) This one sounds like it's going to be a little heavy. (laughs) But, um, yeah, Tetsuka Productions is going to be working on it. Sources of manga, genres are action, drama, thriller, and a series composition by Kohei Kia, Kiyasu, who did Run With The Wind. And the co- original creator is Naoki Yamakawa, who, of course, created I'm Standing on a Million Lives. That's a big question mark for me. <laughs> Streaming on Crunchyroll, of course. Um, 
Yeah, I think the only thing that raises a little bit of a question mark for me is I'm standing on a million lives. I think I'm standing on a million lives had a lot of potential, but the big problem with it is that creator, at least with that project, at least with I'm standing on a million lives, is not very good at like psychological stuff, like getting into the heads of characters that are dealing with heavy subjects. So I don't know if I trust that writer on a project about a syndicate, a syndicate and murder and covering up murder and stuff like that. We'll see. Maybe maybe this is was the, the previous was a test bed and maybe they were trying to make it a little more easier to consume and this one they're going to get a little better with the characters and get a lot more heavier. But it's got a it's got a good premise. I like the concept of it. Um very heavy, very dark. But um We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. It's also one of those stories where I think if it doesn't adapt the whole thing, I, I don't know if it'll be that fulfilling of a series. I don't know. I Any have, thoughts whatsoever, Chris? <laughs> um, I have a moderate interest in it, um, but when it comes down to it, I have this strange feeling that what's going to end up happening is that about the seven episode mark, Andrew's going to start screaming that I need to watch this show because it's the greatest show of all time right. and that he's going to put it as the top show of the year. And then you'll watch it and the daughter dies on episode 10. <laughs> <laughs> the daughter dies on episode 10. And he's like, damn it, why'd you get me this? There's uh, going to be a Tama character the wife, at some The wife point. or the daughter will <laughs> die by the end of the series. I have zero doubt about that. One of the two of them is going down. But um, good on him, though. Good, good Papa. Papa protecting his daughter. Sleeves bag needs to die. <laughs> Watch it turns out all the information he had about the guy was wrong and that he wasn't actually abusive. He was actually a good de- good guy that was trying to protect her too. That would be a twist. Anyways, uh, My Home Hero. Uh, check that out. That's interesting to you. That's, yeah, okay. Another one that Andrew is super excited about is uh, Promised Neverland Season 3. I'm joking. <laughs> Promise Neverland season three. You, you just blew up half the audience. <laughs> They're you like, know that, right? "What? This is no nowhere as good as it, or it's way better." It, both sides. Uh, no, Heavenly Delusion or Tengoku Daimakyo. This one within the safety of the walls. Youth are raised in a nursery style setting by robots. While life there may appear stale on the surface, the children are full of potential and curiosity. And way in many ways, it is like a slice of heaven. The outside world is a hellscape. It is almost entirely a void of anything mechanical and is now inhabited by bizarre yet powerful supernatural beings. Maru, and with the aid of Kiroku, Kiruko, is out uh, there crisscrossing what was n- once Tokyo for heaven. But after searching for so long, maybe heaven is more of an unattainable dream than a potential reality. There you go. Studio is Production IG, sources of manga. The adventure is genres are adventure, fan, mystery, and sci fi. And the creator, the original creator for it is Masakazu Ishiguro, who did And Yet the Town Moves. So there you go. PV looks really good. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not going to lie. The PV looks really good. Um, like I said before, I kind of had a little bit of I, I mean, the initial setup sounds like Promise Neverland. It's the everybody's inside this little safety. They're being raised, the children are being raised. Now, it's robots instead of the spoiler, what it is in that particular story. But I I think as I watched the PV, the thing that I started picking up on is I almost got a, l- a little bit of indication of something like it is obviously like a post-apocalyptic thing. Like you have like the ruins of Tokyo being re-overgrown by plants and then you have these creatures within it. It sort of gave me there was a manga that I read a while back on Crunchyroll that I can't remember the name of it, but it's kind of that plus a little bit of a sense of something like um, from um, uh, was this blanking on name. Who was that one show where they, they had like this, the kids were getting psychic powers and it like jumps way in the future and the kids are in the school. And then at some point they find this, this thing of information from the new world. Kind of give me a little feel from the new world at some point in the synopsis. I don't know, or the uh, PV. So I'm not sure how much is going to rely on that. But I've always, I've always been intrigued by the concept of rediscovery, going through the ruins. It's kind of got a little bit of a um, 
Kokoku type of thing to there as well. But I don't know. I'm I'm on board. It looks really good. Some kind of Matrix thing going on too. They got a lot of stuff going on in it. <laughs> like there is a lot of like supernatural, sci-fi, everything's like all up in this thing. So I'm very curious to how it plays out and how much it's in the characters' minds about like things being really twisted. Got a little Evangelion stuff flying up in there too. They just brought brought all of them together, all of the crazy. They're like, let's take some Evangelion, some Promised yeah, Neverland, just, 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 some, yeah. <laughs> some from the New World, and yeah, the from the New World thing is a lot with the. It's got a little bit of a looks like a boy on boy and girl on girl kissing and stuff. So it's like, well, let's this all this stuff together. Uh, a little bit of Akira in there as well. <laughs> it just got everything all meshed in one, and it looks good. It, the like I said, visually it looks really good. So with a, I, with a little spring, sprinkle of the Ito guy, yeah. Jito, get that a little bit in there. What are your thoughts? Uh, it looks crazy. Looks crazy. <laughs> it. Just, it just looks crazy. That's all you need to know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But that's a uh, heavenly delusion. Check that out. That's interesting. You. Let's move on. This was probably the most what? <laughs> I didn't even know this was coming. Like I, I don't know how I completely missed the announcement of this one. Um, just completely out of left field for me until I actually put this li- outline together. Which is Skip to Loafers, or Skip and Loafers. This one is, Excellent student Iwakura Mitsumi has always dreamt about leaving her small town, going to a prestigious university, and making a positive change in the world. But she's so focused on reaching her goal that she's not prepared for the very different and overwhelming city life that awaits her in Tokyo High School. Luckily, she uh, she makes fast friends with Shima Sosuki, a handsome classmate who's as laid back as she is overprepared. Can this naive country girl make it big in Tokyo with Sosuke at her side? Studios PA works. <laughs> and I, like I said, I don't think I've ever seen PA works do this style. It's very, very unique. And they, they didn't do Kimi ni Todoke, did they? It looks very Kimi ni Todoke. That's that, that, I think, is what I was thinking of, is the, the artwork style. And I think it was Kimi ni Todoke. And like I said, I don't think that was PA Works, but I could be wrong. But, yeah, like, just looking at their history, it's like they've never had anything that's kind of this flat style. Maybe, like, um, Eccentric Family had a very flat style to it, very flat artistic style to it. That's probably as close to it I can probably say. Everything else is pretty, very photorealistic filters and very flashy look to it. This one, again, looks very, not to their style, which is, I'm not saying is a bad thing. It's got its own unique style. I like it, so. I want to say Bur- Burukan had had that kind of style as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, um... PA Works is working on it. Sources of manga. Genres are comedy, romance, slice of life. Again, more romance, slice of life. <laughs> Director, serious competition writer, Kotomi Dai Dei, who did Natsumi's Book of Friends, which, yes. They're also doing the serious competitions, too. So both directing and serious competition by the person that worked on Natsumi's Book of Friends, which I'm all for. I, I absolutely loved that series. So that's a good one. And, yes, it's going to be streaming on Crunchyroll. So. I'm... I'm hesitant on this one because I don't just based off the PV alone. I'm not sure if I'm a fan of the main girl, but we'll see. Maybe it'll turn out to be one of those ones where you kind of watch her and you just at some point just want to support her. You want to you, you want to back her up. You want her to be successful, but uh, definitely going to be going for the whole country bumpkin kind of concept with the story. And um, it's, it's going to be very heavily reliant on the characters and it's got a pretty meaty cast already. With at least you know four or five characters, so hopefully they're just a, a, a solid you know chemistry of characters that I'll be wanting to root for and follow their stories. And I'm pr- I'm usually it's, it's usually with PA works, they've had kind of a very mixed track record when it comes to source material to adapt. So hopefully this is going to be one that's going to be a, a good one. <laughs> we'll see, but I'm on board. It looks good, very unique, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I like the the style and uh, the concept. Eh, I it, it'll be interesting to see if they pull off something um, for sure. I, but I do love love my slice of lives, and so I'm I'm definitely on board. 
you think it'll be one of those finding the middle ground type of stories where she's overly serious about it. He's laid back and he helps her settle down while she helps him correct up. Or do you think she's, she's just going to be shown the better things in life? I besides think they, just I having think her face in a book all the time. Yeah, I think that's really the direction they're going to go is just basically ex- exploring the city life is really what we're probably going to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Skip to loafers. Check that out if that's interesting. I mean, her entire life is revolving around her loafers. So there's a bigger <laughs> world than just her loafers. <laughs> Move on from the loafers, girl. Don't keep looking at the loafers. All right, let's get more Isekai in here. We got to get our, our second of the Isekais out. No, it's his third one so far, huh? Because we had the villainous one. We had the cheat back and forth one. But no, summon to another world for a second time. This is a double Isekai, which again is becoming norm now, apparently. <laughs> this is the new Isekai trend is double Isekais or returning Isekais. Uh, isekai Shokan wa Nidome Desu. This one is, there was once a hero who was summoned to another world, and he saved that world. However, the man was caught in a trap and was forcibly returned to his original world. On top of that, he had to start over as a baby. This is a story of a crazy journey to another world, where the former hero who was reincarnated into a slightly gloomy high school student is re-summoned back into the same world. There's a lot of room to work with. (laughs) With when it's the second time, huh? The synopsis. The synopsis is very clear. It's like he just goes and he goes again. Very gripping. Get ready for a fantastical re-adventure into the another world again. Anyway, Studio Ellie. I don't think I've ever heard of Studio Ellie. (laughs) Still Studio Ellie. Ellie. This uh, the source is a light novel. Zero expectations for this. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Studio Ellie has worked on. Oh, Gibiate, that one. Yeah, that's about it. So, yeah, if you liked G- Gibiate or whatever the hell that one was, there you go. The one that I don't think anybody even licensed. Uh, yeah, uh, genres are adventure, comedy, fantasy, if you didn't guess already. But, um, okay. I don't know. Expectations set to zero for me. Um, what do you think, Chris? Are you gonna? Are you having lowered expectations? Lowered expectations. <laughs> like I said, expectation zero. Be surprised every time. Um, I don't know. The, the, I guess the concept is interesting. I mean, the if he if he goes the second time, he has a chance of specking his character the correct way so he'll be able to um be a little bit more <laughs> does he get to respect you know i'm are I'm you guessing. spoiling things you check the source material this is, a, he gets this, to is respect? A, this is a respect show i mean wasn't there another show like this that was well, maybe that's a later season i i swear i seen this show before and it was like this idea that he went back there and like all of his harem was waiting for him maybe it's a different show so apparently there's two double e guys shows like in the same year, probably. But I don't know that. I think my biggest problem is the the. Uh, I don't expect the synopsis to completely blow me away, but no, this is the one. Yeah, he goes back there and his entire harem joins him. So okay, the, so, so the, I'm on, I'm on board. So Let's do it. The PV we're watching is like I guess the serious story stuff, but there's a second trailer where he's like getting his massive harem back. I think I don't know. Let me see if I can find it so Chris can see the harem build up. But yeah, like it, the other trailer like shows him literally like, oh, they're going to get Isekai'd. I think his skull was getting Isekai'd, if I remember correctly. And like he just kind of smirks because he's like, oh, this is happening again. I guess it's, it's time for me to go back kind of thing. And then, yes, he goes back there and his whole harem's waiting because he saved a bunch of girls and they've all been waiting for him. So there, at least at least you have the positive excitement for you chris i don't know i i i don't know there's mechas and very poorly animated spellcasters shooting at the poorly animated mechas the animation's very very minimum i mean it's moving but it's very minimum stuff so and it's a pv and so if you're showing minimum animation in the pv that shows it's not gonna be too much but he's very cutie toe 
he's very Kirito. So there you go. If you're looking for Isekai again with massive harem, I think the I think the other key art showed like like f- six or seven girls with him. So he's he's gonna have a pretty massive harem, and they're again they're all waiting for him, so he doesn't have to establish them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven, seven members of his harem. So there you go. It just it, what what'll matter is if he's like. Oh no, girls! Or not? I didn't see him like blowing. Most of the time, he's kind of like, "Yeah, all right, cool." What's up, girls? So maybe that's going to be the the positive side is that he's not going to be um, girl phobic. So there you go. Moving on, the legendary hero is dead. This one's finally coming out. <laughs> I swear, we talked about this show like a million years ago, Chris. It's finally, it's finally coming out. Um, but yeah, this one is Yusha ga Shinda. I thought, that, I thought death was a different, oh, was it Shindai or something like that? Shin, was it Shinda? I don't know. Shine. Must be Shin. Yeah, Shine. That's what it is. Anyways, um, far. I'll always think of uh, Miku going Shine. Shine. Yeah, right, right. Far to the north of the world lies Hell's Gate. A portal formerly used by the demon lord to invade the human realm. Thanks to the legendary hero Shion, Blade Arts, wielder of the Excalibur. Oh gosh, Excalibur. He's going to be in the show. No, not Excalibur. Sorry, it just popped my head. Anyways, and his royal band of companions, the gate was sealed off and the demon- uh, demonic threat was vanquished. Unfortunately, the seal was com- incomplete and has begun to weaken, allowing the demons to once again begin to attack. Worried about the safety of his village, selfish and perverted farmer Toka Scott, Toka Scott, uh, <laughs> digs pitfalls to defend against the demons. But fear not, Shion is on his way to reseal Hell's Gate and save humanity, or at least he was, because the legendary hero is dead. Having fallen into one of the pitfalls, Toka dug. Luckily, dealing with the death, Dealing with the dead is the speciality of a necromancer, Henri Hansworth. While she can't revive him, Henri can at least salvage their quest by forcing Toka's soul into Shion's body, uh, rotting body and behind body and, and dragging him along the Hell's Gates in Shion's, Shion's place. Not wanting to be left behind, Toka's childhood friend Yuna, Yunis, tags along. Together, the three of them set out to to just what might be the most unsuitable party to ever try to save the world. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the entire concept sounds absurd. I love it. I'm 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 totally with this. I I the 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 PV looks crazy. Um the concept looks crazy. I'm I'm absolutely on board. This is nuts. Yeah, I think my only hang up is that I'm seeing a lot of like your favorite faces, faces. yeah, yeah like the, the Asabi Asabase type of stuff, which, eh, but uh, the concept is funny though. I do, I do get get a kick out of the concept of. I, I think the last time we read the synopsis, it was just basically, you know, hero comes by and he accidentally killed him. I didn't get that he like set a bunch of pitfalls just to protect the village, and he literally kills the <laughs> the hero, like the hero that fights the demon lord, literally dies by falling in a stupid trap pitfall. Like, hey, really? you do, it happens really? all the time in video games, so like, it has, really? that that's what this is. This is like, ag- not the dungeon of the demon lord full of traps. <laughs> I guess it's to set your, you know, uh, lower your your defenses, and then you're kind of screwed. But I don't know. It seems kind of screwed up in that regard. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't. It didn't really imply from the previous synopsis how they were going to go about saving the world. It didn't imply that he was going to literally have to take over his body. I think it implied that he was going to have to take his body or at least take his place. But yeah, it's, it's got a funny concept. I'm, I'm, I'm hesitantly interested. I'll, I'll just say that that much. I, again, I'm the faces, the faces are they kind of ruin it to me. You know, I'm sure. I'm sure the legendary heroes did check that out. If that's interesting to you. Moving on, we have Yuri is my job. This one is Watashi no Yuri wa Oshikoto desu. This one is Hime is roped into working a weird at a weird cafe where the waitress pretend to be students of an all-girl boarding school. 
she's strangely taken in with her partner, Mitsuki, who is so kind to her in front of customers. There's just one problem. Mitsuki, it really can't stand her. This one's doing to be done by Studio Passione and Studio Lings. Sources of manga, the genres are comedy, romance, and this here's composition by Naoki Hayashi, who did Citrus, A3, and Higurashi Go. And it will be on Crunchyroll. I think this is the one where when I seen the original like announcement art, I was like, oh, this looks kind of pretty clean looking and everything. And then when the the actual new key art came out and the PV came out, I was like, holy crap, the car, the art style changed a lot. <laughs> like they went with a very uh, unique, very fluffy look to the characters and everything. Very moe is type of look to it. So it was kind of a departure from the original style that I I seem to remember seeing. I mean, I could be. I could be crazy, but I think the original style was a lot more clean, a lot more, I guess, shoujo looking. Whereas this one, again, looks more very moe type looking. So, but now the, the concept of, yeah, here it is. Like this, I guess it looks kind of similar. I guess it's not that. No, this, the, this is the original one that we've seen. Yeah, this art looks way different. It seems like we watched a PV before on this at, at some point. Um, yeah, and and I th- back then it it was one of those that I really loved the concept of this, um, but it was back then it 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 felt like it was going for a different vibe, like a a a, a bit more serious of a vibe. And now it's looking like Andrew was saying it it feels a lot more um, fluffy and moe and and like we're gonna be more goofy and stuff like that whereas the last time it was really more centered around the the idea of the other character and and how serious she is and how she uh is is coming off as hating the other character so yeah yeah when they're when they're in front of the customers they're playing off this kind of yuri thing and or more like the fact that she's kind of like a, a princess kind of thing. She's taking care of her. But I mean, all the characters kind of look like they're going for like a very Yuri feel to it. But then it was always like behind the scenes. She just absolutely hates her. Like she hates her nature and what she's going through. I don't know if it was the same synopsis as the, the one where she kind of gives off this vibe that she's perfect. But then she messes up and then she has to work there or something like that. That might be a different one, though. But no, yeah, it, it really does feel like, like I said, with the, the key art with the original one, it was going for like almost a very, very shoujo vibe. Kind of like something like, you know, Bloom Into or something like that. Very Yuri Shoujo. And like I said, this one just, it, it looks like, I don't know, somebody started pushing a little bit towards something like a Kiwani, very Moe type style to it. So it almost feels like they're trying to pick up maybe a more male audience to really sell it. So I don't know if the original intent of the original source material was going for a, a shonen male audience, but the PV is definitely trying to go for that route. So... I don't know how that's going to affect the story itself or if that's going to be a bad thing. Again, it could be the original intent. Who knows? But we'll see. I, I'm I'm fine with it. I think the art style looks cute. I, I think I, I kind of favor a very unique style that they have going for it. So I'm not going to be against it going that style. But just a very... Let me see what the original... It's just Comedy Yuri is the original source material, so... It might just be a male audience to begin with, so there you go. Yuri is my job. We'll we'll see how that one turns out. That one's the, kind of one of those ones where I just have a feeling it's just going to work or it's not, <laughs> and that's sadly the case with a lot of Yuri type of shows. It either works or it doesn't, and a lot of that has to do with how how abrasive the characters are, how very forceful they are. Like Bloom Into You is very natural. Bloom Into You is really my my gold standard. Like if I want to if I want a Yuri, it's got to be like that. Magi Rev here in this season has been working out really fantastic in that regard as well. But um, we'll see. Yuri is my job. Check that out. That's interesting to you. All right. Let's get edgy boy, Chris. It's time for edgy boy, edgy. <laughs> Dead Mount Death Play. It's a showdown for the ages as the legendary hero takes on the corpse god necromancer. But when the dust settles, something isn't quite right. In the final moments of the epic confrontation, the corpse god final gambit shot was wholly unexpected. Reincarnation magic. Across space and time, a boy named Polka... It was really edgy until the Polka part. Polka Shinoyama 
<laughs> Awakens feeling not quite himself. Who would have expected this climactic battle? Good Edel would turn out like this, question mark. Yeah. Uh, being done by Studio Geek Toys, which is a big, massive question mark for me personally, but we'll go with it. Source is a manga. Genres are action, fantasy, supernatural, thriller. The director is the director and series composition writer is going to be Manabu Ono, who did a regular Magic High and Sword Art Online. So that's a pretty solid pedigree. But the interesting thing on this one, I think the one that actually does give me a big, huge like mm, feeling, is that the creator of this one is Ryohoga uh, Narita, who did Durara and Bakano. So. I mean, dude's a good writer, <laughs> like a really good writer. So that that has piqued my interest there. I think when I first came into this particular one, I was like, yeah, yeah, shrug. And then, yeah, the the writer, I'm like, OK, um, got to take note now. So we'll see if that turns out to be a positive. But again, geek toys and some some suspicious little uses of CGI in the trailer does give me a bit of a pause. So we'll see, though. It's obviously going to be very dark and thriller-based because that writer's just really good at that stuff. But your thoughts? I'm curious. I mean, I've I've heard so many good things about... I The, the parts of Durarara I, I watched, I was kind of okay with um but it's one of those things that you you hear about a author so much you you end up kind of just knowing that obviously that's solid pedigree so i'm definitely curious about it um we'll see if i can hang with it but yeah it's definitely on my interest list for sure yeah i think the the oddity about it is like the the pv itself is just giving me like an inability to really kind of stay with my bearings. Like it just, it looks like it's going to be okay. Fantasy setting. And then Isekai to what looks like a modern time, but it looks like it almost has a very, I don't know, some sort of fantasy spin to the modern times itself. You do have like guy with VR headset on, but then you have this other girl. It looks like she has a bunch of weaponry and stuff like that. So I'm guessing whatever he's, I don't know if that he's Isekai with a bunch of other people from that realm over to, you know, modern times, or if it's just an aspect that the modern time setting that he's going to is is full of fantasy as well. It's just it's maybe like da da da, where it's under the surface. Because again, that's that's kind of where this writer really does well is being able to have the the setting that we're familiar with, but having that underbelly that is very um, fantasy and very an unnatural kind of springing its head up. So. Yeah, um, like I said, I think the only thing that I'm really still kind of hung up on is Geek Toys, which I don't know if they've, I don't remember if they've kind of corrected their path recently or not, but they had a rough beginnings. No, they really haven't, because we're, we're getting Ningen Fushin this season, which hasn't been doing very well. <laughs> uh, yeah. It, yeah, it's just they don't have a, they're not a good studio. <laughs> I think the first experience we had was Rewrite, and that was Rewrite, and it was not good. And then uh, I think that that one was Am I the One That You Love or something like that. Would you would you love a pervert as long as she was cute? Was okay. It kind of hit a lot of its its difficulties in that one, I think, with its style. But then, like, Plunderer didn't work out. Uh, Jinso Sangugashi was not good, and Day Live was okay. And then Ningen was just another flop. I don't know. Hopefully they can pull together something. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that it has to be bad if the studio does a, a not a great job. A, a not a great job. A not a great, is that a double negative? It doesn't do a good job. It Because the writing could carry it. The writing could very well carry it. So that's my hope, is that it's just going to be such good writing, I'm not going to care. And again, I'll I'll give that all up to uh, Narita if, if he can hold it together. So... I wish they found a better studio. I mean, he deserves a much better studio to work with. But again, this could be the studio's knock it out of the park kind of feeling. I mean, as much depends on production and planning and budget. All that stuff can kind of change it. So the, again, besides the, the CGI use here and there, it looks good. And the CGI is not that bad. 
Um, they're doing a pretty cool job by stylizing the CGI, so it doesn't stand out too much. We'll see. I'm I'm excited though. I'm excited just based on the writer. So there you go. That's uh Dead Mount Death Play, which is a really edgy edge boy <laughs> type of title, to be probably honest. Uh move on. Let's move on. Let's get on some we, we let's get a massive harem in here. We it's been a while since we've had like crazy massive harem stuff. We gotta have one at least one a season anymore. Um it seems like they're a dying breed, but we like them when they when they pop up. This is very old school harem stuff too. Goddess Cafe Terrace or Megami no Cafe Terrace. This one is Hiato Kasu Kabe has it been accepted into Tokyo U on his first try. Receiving news of his grandmother's death, he returned to his childhood home, Cafe Terrace Familia, for the first time in three years to find five strange girls there who claim to be grandma's family. Hayato's unexpected life is a, in a seaside town with the five girls of Fate Begins Here. Being done by Tezuka Productions, sources of manga, the genres are comedy, etchy, romance. Director is Satoshi Kuahara, who did Girlfriend, Girlfriend, and Takashi Kashi. Series composition by Kichiro Ucha, who did Hinamatsuri and Demon Girl Next Door. And the original creator for this one, and this is probably the only thing that gives me a massive pause. This is the massive pause for Andrew. Koji Seo, who did Fuka, A Town Where You Live in Suzuka. Yes. <laughs> that writer <laughs> anyways um yes like i said i joked about earlier very very old school harem etchy type of setup the i go back home and there's a massive harem waiting for me at this place so there you go like i said i just i have a massive pause because koji seo is kind of one of those he's like the jinrobuchi of harems <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's like the general butchie of harem where there's always got to be some tragedy happens and it's so forced and it just ruins the whole story um he's very melodramatic now the only saving grace here is that this looks like it's comedy etchy romance there's no drama in there so hopefully that means that he's going to be like okay i don't need to have stupid melodrama and forced uh tragedy to tell a story maybe i'll just have fun so that's my hope. Is that this just be dumb fun? It look the PV already looks like it's got plenty of etchy in it, which I'm thumbs up. <laughs> Perfectly good with that. Um we'll see. We'll see. I I'm middle ground right now. I'm very middle ground with this one. We'll we'll see if it pulls off something fun. It's gonna be, of course, with a harem like this, it's always gonna come down to is the chemistry solid and is the main character not completely unbearable. Because often lately, my enjoyment of harem shows sometimes comes down to, yes, chemistry, but mainly main character. Is he a spaz? Is he, again, booby phobia? Is he annoying? That's the question mark. So, thoughts? Yeah, um, I want to um, make sure that I'm very clear with everybody because we all know that Chris doesn't much care for the, the harem thing. So um, the, the introduction of the bra, I mean, the first character, which is obviously going to be one of the harem uh, love interests. Um, this character came in and it's obviously a Sundere. And we all know that nobody much cares for Sundere's. So we, we, we are falling into the trope levels of introduction of these characters um who am i fooling i love it i absolutely can't wait um i actually did really like fuka town where you live and um so having another what? thing you watched them yes really I, I was screaming from the rooftops that you had to watch uh, a town where you live i really liked it um if i remember right it was one of my favorites at the time um Town Your Relive just had a really terrible ending. <laughs> like the ending was just stupid. It was so stupid. Fuka's just kind of cruel, and Suzuka was kind of the same that, so... Um, 
but yeah, I really, really love the author. So I'm super excited to see a harem from this, uh, this author. So yeah, absolutely on board with this one. There you go. Singing praises from Chris. Goddess Cafe Terrace. Check that out. Check that out. Next one we have is Ao no Orchestra. We have some music. Let's get some music up in here. We gotta get a music show. Um, I didn't want to maximize that. I'm I'm perfectly fine with the mm-hmm. size that it is. Anyways, Hajime Ono Aono it was a prodigy violinist until he grew jaded with playing the violin due to personal reasons. Just personal reasons. Now in his third year of middle school, he struggles to find his academic path. One day in school, he meets Ritsuko Akine. Akine. Is that? It's just, it was a corner of my eye, and I totally see it. It's everybody's CGI. <laughs> and, and I know it was it was oh, me going gosh. oh, and and no, sitting I back, s- and Andrew goes no, it was it, I, at the corner <laughs> of my eye. I seen the the conductor, and I'm like, is that CGI? And then you went oh, and I, it's got to be CGI. And I look over, and every instrument and every hand is sausage fingers, and it's like. Guh, guh. <laughs> Anyways, where was that? One day in school, he meets Ritsuka Akine, a hot-headed novice violinist who wants to enroll in a high school with a distinguished orchestra club made of full CGI. Um, when he finds himself getting closer to Ritsuko and being brought back to the world of violinist, time starts moving again for him. This is a journey of a youthful drama where sound and heart alike resound in harmony. Surprise this one doesn't have romance in the genres. Hmm. Dramas are drama and ro- and just music. Drama and music. So, studio is Nippon Animation. Source is a manga. And uh, yeah, that's. I didn't really find anybody interesting working on it besides apparently a CGI group. <laughs> <laughs> It'll probably just be that one performance. Hopefully, when they're they're. Hopefully when they're just in the classroom practicing, it doesn't show the CGI. It's not terrible CGI. The the, the conductor looks a little rough, but the, the 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 instruments and everything are fine. It's fine. It's not going to be the focus. Don't worry, Andrew. That's not the focus. It's just the inspiration. That's all it is. That's the inspiration. The rest of it looks fine. I'm 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 actually like a lot of the character designs. Or some of them are kind of um, generic, but. It kind of looks like, uh, as far as the characters, just yeah, see, the yeah, it's not it looks like we're getting um, uh, Hibiki Euphonium and um, characters from a um, uh, town where you live. So you're getting a kind of a cross between those two two groups as far <laughs> you're as... You're town where you live again. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's where a lot of the character artworks look like they're coming from. So, uh, I mean, throw in, uh, the, the character from the, uh, from the Yabai show. Um, the, the, his, his hair is all, all over his face. So yeah, you know that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it they, the characters look adorable. <laughs> Every I, time he comes <laughs> on the screen, you can't help but laugh. The conductor. <laughs> he just looks so weird. Yeah. Um, if you can get past the CGI, I, we got some fantastic character artwork. I, 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 I'm, I could hope that there's good, solid music with this because this is going to live or die on that music for sure. Yeah, um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of violin. I always wanted to learn the violin. I just never did. It was probably one of the, if you ever asked, like told me you're going to learn one musical instrument instantaneously, I'd be like violin. It's like, yeah, please. But um, yeah, I, I went through like doing trying guitar and stuff and I'm like, I'm just never going to do it. So I don't want to bother with it. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I, I like how they're joining this club. I, I guess they just went through some other orchestra performance and then they just decided to build up the club because it looks like it's just them in the club. So obviously that's not their orchestra. Maybe it's another school, but we'll see. Again, I was a little surprised to see that it didn't have romance in the tags, but maybe it's not going to be full on romance. It obviously seems like it's based on this one girl's desire to be in the music that he kind of gets reintroduced to it, but obviously not. Why am I looking up Nippon Animation? I'm supposed to look up how on oh, no, the orchestra. I was gonna see maybe if it's tagged elsewhere as as romance. Let's just see. Let's see the, the the Wikipedia always tells you 
coming of age drama and music. So not, not even Wikipedia is listening in as romance. Must not be a, a center point of focus. So again, Aono Orchestra. Check that out if that's interesting to you. Let's get into another isekai. Isekai so number we're going four now? Question mark. So we're getting away from uh, two hit mom kills to two hit sister kills. Yeah. No, it's one hit sister. Oh, kills. one hit sister kills. Because yeah. we all know that. Um, Emo well, that was, was her two hit combo attack. She could always knock things out in one hit. It's just mm-hmm. she did two hits for some reason because it looked cooler. Uh, with uh, apparently Kazuma as the main character. Like, it doesn't even have the same outfit as Kazuma. <laughs> Got, like, Kanasuba outfit. Apparently, this is a new generic outfit for characters. Anyways, uh, my one-hit sister... One-hit kill sister, sorry. Uh, or Isekai one-turn kill Nissan Ane Dohan no Isekai Saikatsu Oh, it's a big Mashita. sister. We have yeah. a couple of people who like the, the big sisters. I like big sisters. Anyways, uh... Quote, unquote, it wasn't me who was the strongest in the world, but my sister. Uh, As a result of an accident in the real world, Asahi Ikusaba is transported to another world. He tries to enjoy the different world he's imagined, but his abilities prove to be the weakest. Just as he's about to get attacked by a vicious monster, Asahi's doting elder sister, Mayu, comes to his rescue and saves him. Chasing after Asahi's love... Uh, Mayu, too, ended up in the same world as him. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, <laughs> with the strongest of the abilities and cheat skills, the fantasy late, uh, tale of the strongest elder sister and the brother with a brother complex and the younger brother who's the weakest skill begins. That was my big question mark was like, does she literally like see him getting hit by a truck and jump in front of the truck too? <laughs> <laughs> or just jump off a building just after him, which would be really, really screwed up setup. But there you go. Um, yeah. Brocon, Siscon. It literally is to hit combo mom because... Again, with the two hit combo one, the mother was like super doughty to him. And it seems like obviously with this one, she's got a massive like love brother complex kind of thing going on. Um, the yeah, studio is Gecko. Who the hell is Gecko? Uh, Source of the Love novel. The genres are comedy, fantasy, romance, romance. I gotta get some romance in there. Uh, director is Seiji Kishi, who did Suki uh, uh Angel Beats, Yuki Yuna as a hero, and Radiant. Series composition by Yuko uh, Kakihara, who did Cells at Works, Aquatope on White Sand, and Chihayafuru. So, really solid team behind it. And, yes, it will be on cr- the crunchy of the rolls. Let's look at Gecko. I mean, it looks okay. It's got a very sketchy outline to the series, for sure. Mm, Gecko has done nothing so far. <laughs> The new studio, apparently. Uh, they do have planned to do Temple later, which was the one with the guy that gets he goes to become a monk and ends up being a monk at a place full of hot girls. But that hasn't aired yet. So this is the, the first of their, I guess, full-on productions. So they probably worked on some in-betweens outside of it. It seems like I've heard their name before. Um, but Probably Gekko Kashi. <laughs> no. Um, um, School I, live. Yeah, get Gekko Kashi. But anyways. No, it seems like uh, it was like a um, a combined show with somebody else mm. to get well, them Well, it would have listed if that was a combined. So they must have just done some side stuff. I don't know. I, the, the concept is funny. I, I just, there, there is a little bit of a hesitation with me because of the fact that um, to hit Combo Mom was not good. Wow, the, even Anime News Network only lists those. Oh, hmm. Peter Grill, they did sound pr- production assistance, but that's it. So they've literally done nothing. I wonder if they're a spinoff studio or if they just literally just popped up. I'm going to assume they are. Um, no, I, I, the, the concept is absolutely goofy. The character is, the, the sister is absolutely a doof. I can't, can't wait to see a lot of this. This, this looks like fun. Yeah, I think their chemistry is going to be like, Obviously, <laughs> they're the two main characters. Their chemistry is going to be very telling. Because, again, as I was alluding to earlier, with two-hit Mambo, 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 uh, two-hit Mom's attacks, whatever one, 
I just hated the main character and the mom didn't really she was funny at first, but she really did become kind of annoying at some point. So I don't know. It's like it, it's a great concept. Just hopefully they nail that chemistry between the characters. And it's obviously going to be a lot to do with the side characters. They look like they have a lot of a lot of different personalities in the side characters. But um, it's just so goofy that he he looks so much like Kazuma. <laughs> he just looks so much like him. <laughs> we'll see, though. It could be a really solid comedy or it could be an absolute flop. It's um, just kind of looks like that to me. We'll see. My one hit kill sister. Next we have is the aristocrat otherworldly adventure serving God who goes too far. Uh, I think we've seen this one. This, wasn't this the one that had like the super Shota? I think it was the one with the super Shota. Might be a different one. Our right, Tensei Kizoku no Isekai Bokun or Bokun Roku Jicho wo Shiranai Kamigami no Shito. This one is Shina Kazuya is killed protecting a young girl at a convenience store where he just happens to be at the wrong time. The next thing he knows, he's in the kind of world where he only dreamed about, a world of magic and swords. He has been reincarnated as Kane von Silf Sil Silford, the third son of an aristocratic family, and he quickly grows interested in many things he sees. Then, on his fifth birthday, he is baptized at the church according to tradition. And the gods grant him several divine abilities or blessings, along with the stat, uh, stats that could only be described as unusual and extraordinary. In his reincarnated life, when it comes to uh, comes to be things like battle, romance, and study, apparently a little overkill is just right. When he puts all of it, puts in the usual effort to do things, particularly um, punctual, punctually and properly, it only gets him in trouble. Thus, Kane's chaotic life in another world begins. That sounds so generic. <laughs> sounds so <laughs> generic. Um, we'll see, but dang if I'm just like, shrug. <laughs> super shrug. Reincarnate. Super OP. Tons of girls. Studio is Magic Bus and EMT Squared. Interesting combination. Source is a light novel. Genres are action, fantasy, romance. Uh, the series composition by Natsuko Takahashi, who did My Love Story and Love Lies. Love and Lies, sorry. And uh, this will be on Crunchyroll. Thoughts? My Love Story and Love and Lies. Mm-hmm. And now we're doing this. <laughs> huh. <laughs> um. Yeah. I... It's just it's say that, shrug, you, cute girls no, shrug. Cute girls, yeah, there definitely is cute girls. Um the that's an odd, interesting combination. I mean, I absolutely adored love and uh my love story. So that that gives you some cutesy Love and Lies is a really that one was uh, no, that was a that was the uh goofball ones too. So and we could have some solid comedy here. I mean, it's it's possible. Yeah, I'm. A, I, I, I'm. I, I like the idea. I'm gonna try. There you go. I will try everything, but I have again another one. I'm gonna put zero expectations on. <laughs> the girls are cute. There you go. I'll give it one thing. Girls are cute. The aristocratic otherworldly adventure serving God who'd gone too far. But again, this is like one of those. This is one of those. It's titles. a Shotokan show. I mean, this... it, it. It literally is. It. it the. The. The people who like this. Sh this show is it's the people who like shotas so because the shota is gonna get all think, the girl i don't think people watching this show are after the show <laughs> i know right <laughs> it's a self-insert wish fulfillment show but no it, it, this is one of those problematic things in anime right now was where you have these very generic sounding shows amongst 50 to 60 titles you're not gonna stand out unless somebody is just like i don't care i just want to watch guy get tons of girls which is perfectly fine, and I get in that state and that's a lot me. of time. I want to see a guy get tons of girls. That's, over and over I love again. It. I Every love season, it. he starts over. He new guy, get those girls again, and then the season ends, and he goes, all right, what's the next guy to go get the cute girls? We'll see. Time for some Beauty and the Beast. We already <laughs> did that one. I know, with the outcast, tell outcast. Uh, anyways, <laughs> this is totally freaking... <laughs> if he buys a girl, I think he does. It's like... 
<laughs> Ancient Mac is pride, anyways. Uh, Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts are Nie Hime to Kimono no Ao. The King of the Beasts and Demons regularly receives a female human sacrifice to eat in order to assert the dominance of the people over the human race. Uh, however, the 99th sacrifice the human girl brought to the capital, Seraphi, intrigues the Beast King. In fact, she isn't afraid of him or any other beast and even accepts her death without begging or crying as she has neither home nor family to return to if she is released. The king finds her intriguing and let her stay at his side as a consort despite being human. This is the story of how Seraphi will soon or will become the queen of the demons and beasts. I guess she's cool with the idea of the fact that he's killed 98 girls. <laughs> I already don't. I mean, there's probably I swear there's probably going to be some explanation that he doesn't actually kill all the girls. But like I have I have zero like in this guy. The fact that he's literally killed 98 innocent children that has been brought to him. <laughs> but we're supposed to like him because he like he's OK with her. <laughs> there's got to be an explanation. Um, There you go. And of course, there's going to be the boy that's trying to save her the entire time. Of course, there's going to be the hero trying to save her the entire time. And she'd be like, no, it's OK. He's nice to me. No, he kills. He's killed my sister or something like that. I'm already writing out the story. Why the <laughs> uh, It's got a good style to it. Eventually, it looks, it looks really solid. I mean, it's JC staff, so they're going to be working on it. It's based on a manga, genre of drama, fantasy, romance. Director is Chiaki Kon, who did Naruto, Golden Time, Higurashi, When They Cry, Way of the House Husband. Series composition by Seishi Minakami, who did uh, Sugar, who's doing currently Sugar Apple Fairy Tale, and did Scientific Railgun. And it'll be on Crunchyroll. What do you think, Chris? Um, this was actually the one that I was looking for recently. Um, when Tales of Outcast came out, um, I thought it was actually this one, and this is the one that I've been been hoping for for a while. Um. The the character um, style is absolutely I'm absolutely on board with it. I so yeah, and the concept was super interesting. Uh, so I really want to watch this one that, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, she definitely has a wisteria look. <laughs> like both wisteria from Outcast and her have the same style: the white hair, short, very very petite, and then having the big buff monster. Which this one's a lion dude, and the other one was like a weird cat demon dude but um yeah i'm i mentioned it like i said i'm 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 probably more interested in at face value than i was outcast i ended up liking outcast a lot um but this one was more a little bit more intriguing at face value i think again because it kind of gives me a lot of vibes of ancient magus bride it's not ancient magus bride because he's not teaching her magic but it does have that same concept of you know some girl being brought in and taken care of by him whether it be by sacrifice or buying but um, I'll be I'll be interested in it. I'll, I'll, again, I'll be curious to see how they explain off the fact that he's technically had 98 sacrifices before her. <laughs> I know there's going to be some explanation. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Sacrifice of Princess and the King of Beasts. Check that out if that's interesting to you. Pocket Monsters. Gotta catch them all. It's coming back. The new season. Um, re- the new characters to replace Ash Ketchum. Uh, the new generation of Pokemon, a new dream and adventure set throughout the entire Pokemon world, unfolds in a brand new Pokemon series following a girl named Rico and a boy named Roy. I wonder what they'll rename him as in English. I think it'll be like, uh, uh, um, I'm trying to think of a really funny name. Mustard instead of Ash Ketchum. It'll be Mustard. And then she'll be <laughs> she'll be like uh, uh, Tina or something. <laughs> joy. Just Joy. No, they already have a joy. They can. They don't. Doesn't mean they have to have nurse. Joy. Oh, it's supposed to be in the same universe, huh? Because I think some people are already speculating on if they'll have Ash in the world or not. That poor boy finally freaking retiring. <laughs> for Ash Ketchum finally retiring. Uh, being done by Studio OLM again, based on a game, uh, venture fantasy for it. So I don't know. I I kind of put Pokemon behind me a long time ago. I was kind of actually interested in going and checking out the ending of of the original series and then i don't know i might i might possibly check out a few episodes of this because i've heard the writing in pokemon is really solid i mean it hasn't really let up but 
Just a long series. Anyway, there's Pikachu. He's got a cool hat on. He's in Captain Pikachu's team. <laughs> Captain Pikachu team. <laughs> I I vaguely am in the this kind of weird space of I love that Pokemon exists. Um do play I play the games watch? every now and then? Yeah, I play the games every once in a while. Uh I I it, do I intend on watching the um 3000 episodes of Pokemon? Probably not. <laughs> They took in breaks. <laughs> uh, Magical Destroyer. It's Asuka. Or Maho Sojo Magical Destroyers. This one is set in a dystop- uh, dystopic near future where Taku culture in Japan has been obliterated by a mysterious organization known as SSCs. This sounds like a, pre- a recent show. <laughs> what was that show? I forget what it was. Um, the one with the mechas and everything, and they had to hide away. It freaking looks absurd. <laughs> um, magical girl destroyers follow the misadventures of a Taku hero, a young revolutionary uh, revolutionary who loves a Taku culture, an anarchy blue and pink, a trio of magical girls who admire him. Together, they struggle to create a world where you can say what you like about what you like as much as you like. You know, by Studio Bibbery Studio, uh, the source is an original. The genres are Magical Girl, and the director is Hiroshi Ike Hata, who did Tonikawa no and Fulikuri Progressive. You know what? I have no interest anymore. Because of Fulikuri Progressive? Well, it's not like he created it. He just directed it. So, um, Yeah. the, the <laughs> I don't much care for the otaku guy. He looks very generic to otaku, but I guess if he's going to be fighting for otaku culture, you got to look like a generic otaku guy. But the girls look crazy. Look like a lot of fun. I mean, it, it kind of gives me a little bit of vibe. Of it. I'm curious if it's going to be one of those elements where it's just kind of overly over the top uh, violent, but it's not to the point where it's super violent. Like it's just like borderlining it just for the sake of comedy. Um, that's kind of where I'm imagining it's probably going to be sitting at violent comedy, but not like gruesome com- or violence. So. I don't know, like I said, it kind of reminds me a lot of, gosh dang it, I forget what the name of that show is, and it's driving me crazy. There was a show here recently where there's like this parallel world that comes in, and they take away all the talk of culture because it ruined their culture, and so they kind of hide away and use the power of their desires to power these mechas, and it was kind of a, a lot to do with the same thing, and with that one, it worked in certain ways, but other ways it didn't. And so hopefully this one kind of nails it and has a through line of entertainment value in it. And I think it could probably be, they could probably pull it off by, based on this, the style and aesthetic that it has going for it, which is really, really over the top goofy looking. I mean, it, it's obvious, like they're obviously going for Asuka and it, with the red hair girl. I'm, I'm trying to place the other two and I, I recognize them and I can't, I mean, it's probably the, the pink hair is probably, um, uh, Madoka, I it, it, it's obvious the references that they're trying to do, it, and, and I'm 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 very curious of this show. This this one will live or die on its comedy because it's literally the absurdity. It's obvious that they're gonna go for that kind of comedy, um, just absolutely blatant in your face references that you're going. It's so on the nose that you, without actually saying the names of whatever they're referencing, it's going to be there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm actually very, very curious of this. This one does look very interesting. So the, the actual create, the person that's being credited for the credited for the writing itself is a underground art and music creator. He doesn't have any kind of listings of for like credits for anime or manga or light novels. Just legit. He's just listed as underground art and music creator. <laughs> so I don't know. That could be a good thing. Um, if possibly that if he has if he's a very creative mind, there's a possibility that they can sort of um, incorporate music into style itself. I think they have somebody else's listed as the musician, which is kind of weird in that regard. No, they don't have anybody listed for music. So maybe he's going to do the music as well. And that could be a possible solid tie in. Who knows? I don't know. This is, it's a, it's a big, it's a big massive question mark one. Uh, it's probably going to be like the, 
it's a good chance it's going to be one of those. Oh, he's actually the script writer is actually the one that did the story for Gargantua and the Virtuous Planet. Interesting. Hmm. So maybe that's where a lot of the writing might come from. Because if he's just listed as creator, it doesn't mean he's actually going to write it. He could probably have the concept. And then possibly uh, Daishiro uh, Tamimura might be the actual writer. Because he's listed as both script and series composition. Typically when you list them like that, they're they're doing the full writing for it. This is definitely the biggest question mark in the entire series. Like This is the one where it's like, this is going to either work or flop. And I'm really curious of which one it's going to do. It might be end up being one of those ones that just kind of comes out of nowhere and possibly does something really good. Yeah, even Wikipedia shows Daishiro as the writer. So the Gargantua and the Virtuous Planet writer is going to be doing the writing. So it's just the original concept was by an artist. Hmm. We'll see. <laughs> That's a big, massive question mark right there. But we'll see. Next one I am super excited for. This is one I've been excited for for a long, long time. I think the moment that we talked about it being adapted. My clueless first friend, or Jijo, will Shiranai Tinkose ga Gyugui Kuru. Kuru. This one is Nishimura Akane is a black sheep in her class, and not a day passes without her classmates picking on her. But Takara Taiyo. Is a new is new and has no clue why she would be, be treated that way. Will his straightforward nature become a ray of sunshine in Nishimura's gloomy days? Let their wholesome story be uh, bring you back to your care, uh, back to the carefree times of your youth. Youth. Being done by Studio Signposts, sources of manga genres are comedy, slice of life. And uh, one note, I didn't see anything really important in the creators or the team behind it, but yes. The main girl's voice is by Konomi Kohara, who, of course, is voice of Roxy. So that was a big, that was a big, massive plus for me. <laughs> I love her voice. So, yeah, it looks super cute. Um, and me and Chris were looking at this trailer earlier, and I'm like, wow, they are, they're really implying a lot of stuff that might actually end up being, like, gut punches here and there. Um, obviously, a lot of signs of loss and family and coming together through that loss. But... Yeah, the, the, it kind of implies a little bit, and I'm not sure how this might go, and this is completely speculation. It kind of implies this idea that she she's always called Shinigami, and at some point it kind of shows him at some graveyard, and it kind of implies this idea of, I'm wondering if he thinks that she could possibly save his father or something like that. And I'm curious how that that interaction might conclude, but it looks good. It looks super wholesome, it looks super cute, and then it looks like it's got some, some heart-wrenching moments in there that I think are going to probably be cut punches. Yeah, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. I, I absolutely adore the artwork. I very the, unique art style. Yeah, yeah, the characters are just too adorable. Um, I love the concept of um, finding this puppy love in in through acceptance and uh, loss and uh, stuff like that. That could be really um, just just a heartwarming story that that could come out of this. So I'm absolutely on board with it. It's got a very old classic style to it. it reminds me of Gigi no Kitaro. Yeah. So that's like what immediately came to my mind. Super cute though. I hope it turns out to be really solid, but that's, like I said, it's one that I've been like, I want this the moment that I've seen it. I'm like, this is going to be super cute. Uh, another one that's like a big, massive question mark for me. <laughs> this one's like a massive, like, I don't know. This could be really good. Uh, what God does in a world without gods, or Kaminaki Sekai no Kamisama Katsudo. This one is Yukito's parents are the leader of a cult. After he gets sacrificed, he gets reincarnated into a world, another world where religion doesn't exist, and uh, prawn books are akin to child doodles. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is the synopsis? I don't remember the synopsis last time. Uh, he finds that it's also a world where your life and death is decided by the country. While obstructing his friend's uh, execution, both him, uh, both of them lose their lives. Just at uh, at that time, the god of his religion comes to the world and revives him. So basically, he was in a cult before. They got rid of him. And then this new world, he pre I think he pretty much calls out to the same goddess. And I think it's a goddess. And she just pops up out of nowhere. And she looks... Like, she's going to be a 
a lot of fun. <laughs> like the PV and when I the moment she finally popped up on the screen, I'm like, okay, cool. Like I wasn't following the show until she suddenly shows up and just starts being goofy. Again, I'm guessing it's a she. Um yeah, Studio Palette's working on it. Sources of manga, uh genres are action, comedy, drama, etchy, fantasy. And yeah. Uh, yeah, nothing really notable from the the team behind it, but yeah, she looks she looks like she could possibly She's make or break the dork. show. I love it. it. It's got a little. It, it looks like it's gonna be like very dark. the fir- The first part of the PV is like super dark. It's like a set guy, and the world's like really terrible. They're basically lining up a bunch of people and making them drink poison, um, which is like I said, the whole your fate and your life and death has been on the co- the uh, country itself. And then suddenly it's like he's dying, and then suddenly she shows up, and it's 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 got like this mixture of goofy comedy and then like almost a twisted comedy to it. Um, yeah, looks like when he got a sec eyed, she grabbed his his groin, and there's like a CGI dog out of nowhere. Like what? What's with the random CGI fox in the town? <laughs> We've carnated into a world with CGI foxes. It's just so awkward looking. I think the only big question mark is I think the studios only really worked on um, Spirit Chronicles, which wasn't bad visually. So I don't know. I'm I'm on board just. Just based on the goddess girl, she looks she looks funny, so she could possibly be a, a real bundle of joy. Yeah, your thoughts? <laughs> I'm in this this weird spot of man that looks th- th- like Andrew was saying that a lot of the first stuff looks really dark. Um, there's these a few cute characters that are that could kind of contrast it well, um, but yeah, that. The goddess looks like a dork, and I can't wait to see her. If if anything else in the show, she's going to make it. I hope she's Tama. Did you hear her voice? I don't think it was Tama when I, I it didn't jump out at me when I was when I was actually watching or it. Or Aoyuki. It's got to be one of the two. I think I recognized her. It just didn't really, like I said, it didn't jump out to me. It is Akari Kito, who is. It's the girl from on Talakawa. Oh, that's right. It was Kotoko from Inspector. That's who that's who jumped out at me when I was listening to it. Oh, cool. Okay. Love it. I, I, so I really she can, want to She could definitely do a very good mischievous voice. Yeah. I, I definitely Kato. Am. Kato. Shadow's house. Kato. But yeah, definitely uh seems very, very interesting. I am very curious of this one. Yep, yep, yep. What God does in a world without gods. Next one we have has very little information on it. <laughs> so there you go. Um, the Marginal Service. Uh, being done by Studio 3 Hertz. Uh, Source is original. Director is Masayuki Saiko, who did Cautious Hero and Strawberry Panic. Series composition by Kinta Ihara, who did Vinland Saga, Miracle chan and Uncle from Another World. And that's all the information we have. We have no synopsis or anything. There you go. I'm guessing they're a service that's um, pretty marginal. Um, there's there's monsters. Okay. Um, they wear fireman hats, construction hats. Um, lots of explosions. Uh, car they chases. They do services on the margin between reality and the other world. There you go. Guy with machine gun and seaweed on his head. There's a chipmunk with a bazooka. <sighs> I think it's a bazooka. <laughs> uh, there's a idol guy. Uh, there's a dancing monster thing, and they're all shooting it with machine guns with, again, construction hats on. That guy has a big bazooka thing. There you go. That's marginal service. They they fight things. And chickmunks. And it's the year 2020, 20X. There you go. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what that turns out to be. It looks like an action, possibly comedy show. So, uh, you thoughts? think this is going to be c- comedy? It, the chipmunk get, is the giveaway. the The chipmunk's the only thing that gives me away as being some sort of comedy. Oh, it's a, it's got a chipmunk. It it's got to be funny. No. I I don't know. I I I just see chaos on the screen. Very so. sentai, f- super sentai kind of feel to it. 
I guess their, their outfits Hugo. look so stupid. <laughs> I can't get over the construction hat with the I mean, regular, I, like tights and stuff. I did. Th- th- I don't know. There's something about this this absurdity that I don't know that it's. It, it looks like the. There was a show that I had watched way back when, and it, and it, there's this um, kind of insanity chaos comedy that has never worked for me so i'm not i don't have a lot of hope for this i i do like a uh, comedy that is um that is absurd but at the same time i don't like it where it's so chaotic that it doesn't um doesn't have some kind of a through line and this feels like it's going to be that type of comedy i don't know i got, I got a little bit of vibes of like high card which that would probably fit in with the comedy as well, whereas High Card doesn't really go out of its way. It just kind of happens. It's happenstance kind of comedy. We'll see. Big, big question mark show. Absolute massive question mark show. So we'll we'll see how that one turns out. Side Games is producing it, so it's going to have a really good budget. That's probably one thing you probably should keep in mind. It does not mean it's going to have a mobile thing. It's just I was going to say, it probably has a mobile game out there no. somewhere. Side Games does a lot of... Side <laughs> yeah, Games does explain do, a lot of I mean, crap. like, Akiba Made War was Side Games too, and there's nothing really... There probably is a made game out there. There isn't. They do. They often do, like, a, a manga or something on the side sometimes, so... It doesn't always mean mobile game adaptation. There you go. Check that out if that's interesting to you. Itaku Elf. This one's finally coming out. <laughs> We've talked about this one to death, I think, on our podcast. Uh, Edomai Elf, or Itaku Elf. Kagone K- uh, Koito is a teenager wait, who why works... why is she drinking Red Bull? Wait, 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 wait. They can't do that. Elves can drink Red Bull. That, no, it, it would be Blue Bull or something like that. Yellow oh. Bull. Oh. It, it, Maybe they it got has a collaboration. to be something. Maybe it's a collaboration. Maybe it is. Uh, Kogane Koito Got is a thing. teenager who works as an attendant to the Takamimi Shrine. Rumors have it that a deity dwells within the shrine, but the actual resident of the is an immortal elf who found herself stuck on Earth after 400 years ago. Um, what's more, the elf is a total shut-in who won't go outside and has developed a taste for video games. Now, the attendant at the shrine have to cater to the elf's love of the most modern gizmos from handheld video games, virtual reality headset, and a charming fantasy comedy. Done by Studio C2C, sources of manga, genres are comedy, slice of life, supernatural. Director is Takafumi Anzai, who did Hitori Bochi, and series composition by Shogo Yasukawa, who did Food Wars and Mitsuboshi Colors. So, solid team behind it, for sure. But, um, yeah, I immediately got vibes of Inori Kankan. <laughs> yeah. Inori Kankan with the, the girl who goes to the shrine and the, 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 sh- the goddess within there, which was the, was a fox god, but she was like a total shut in, was like super into, you know, romance from her visual novels that she found. But, um, yeah, that's straight up a Red Bull can, like not even hiding that one. So that must have like approval for that one. Yeah, it, it looks, it looks super cute. Um, I'll be interested to see how that one kind of turns out. I, I think um, we've had quite a few shows, I guess. I mean, even with um, Kuma Kuma Kuma, not Kuma Kuma Kuma. Um, what was the bear one with the Shrine Girl? It was just Kuma Mi- Bear? Kuma Bear. Kuma Miko. Miko. Mi- Kuma Miko, yeah. Kuma Miko. <laughs> it was something like that. <laughs> um, the whole idea of having something within a shrine and somebody has to take care of that, that hidden away from the society person. So. Yeah, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, looks like there's going to be some emotion in there. Looks like some tie-ins, probably. She knew her from a long time ago. She just doesn't remember, probably. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be interested to see that one. It looks like it'd be a really fun little laid-back show. Yeah, it could. Yeah, definitely. It, if they if they get do some solid uh, drama beats, get get a good uh, comedy uh, uh, chemistry going on, it, this, this definitely could be a solid show, for sure. Yeah, I wonder if it's got a lot of the comments going to be around the idea that she's such a deadbeat. <laughs> I mean, the character artwork is absolutely fantastic. I love it. She's always wanting, and she always has to take care of her. Yeah, that's a uh, Ataku Elf. Moving on, we have Kawaii Sugi Crisis. Um, this one is the story follows Lisa Luna, who has been dispatched to Earth by the space empire Asatos. At first, she thought that she would be fine to destroy the Earth. 
since it has a low level of civilization. Damn right. <laughs> However, after stopping at a cafe, she encounters a cat and is shocked by her cuteness. <laughs> Basically, the world has been saved by a cat cafe. <laughs> Studio Synergy SP, the sources of manga, genres are comedy, sci-fi. Director is Jun Hattori, who did Taisho Tommy Fairy Tale. That's about it. Um, I will say this show looks very, uh, I would say, a very unique style to it. Very thick lines, but not overly animated. I don't know, it looks a little stiff, in a way. But, goofy concept. I, I, I think this is probably going to be... I, I think at first, when I first heard about this show, I thought it would be like just a super fluff show. Like, oh... Cats are cute. Fluffy cats. Cats are cute. But it does like it's going to have like a full on cast of characters around her that will probably add some pretty solid chemistry, hopefully. But you don't think they're just going to talk all about how great cats are? Just that the yeah. entire cast is just uh, different, different people to tell her how awesome cats are. No, I think the cat's going to be set up for her coming down there and then she's going to meet people. It's probably going to be centered around the cat cafe. Maybe people that work at the cat cafe. Possibly. I don't know, it just seems like most, like, besides the very beginning part, most of the PV is outside the Cat Cafe, so, I don't know. We'll see. It could possibly be something more. I don't know, I I have a feeling this is going to be one of the shows that I'm just not going to vibe with. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not, like, a super cat person or into the fluffy for the sake of fluffy stuff. Yeah, she, obviously, that girl works at the cafe because she's got an apron for it. You know, Thoughts? Uh, that that it's going to be her coming down and they're going to talk about cats for 12 episodes. Yeah. Hopefully it's a short. Too Cute Crisis. I forgot that was the English title, by the way. Cute, too Cute Crisis. Hopefully it's a short. <laughs> I don't know. Again, I don't mind. I don't mind cats, but I, I, I don't know if I want 12 full length episodes of being told how great cats are. I don't know. We do that for a lot of other things. <laughs> Oh, Andrew's anime of the season is our next one. Yes, it is Kizuna o Elele. The story is about a bond between girls. Kizuna Eye appears like a comet in the virtual world, becomes massive popular in a blink of an eye. After winning the Lepin Dior, the highest honor of the virtual grid awards, five years in a row, she just appears and as quickly as she came. Seven years, several years, se yeah, several months have passed since then. Aiden Academy is a school that specializes in training new talent that will become their debut in the virtual world. There, students with each of their own hopes and dreams work hard every day. I want to be a virtual artist just like I. A young girl named <laughs> Miracle enrolls in Aiden Academy with the convictions in her heart. There, she'll, she'll meet uh, all kinds of people and make wonderful new memories with them as they each pursue their dreams. Signal MD is working on it with apparently with studios involved with them. I that's weird. Um, yeah, the source of course is the VTuber Kizna I. Hidomi Mueno is working on it, which she's amazing um, as a series composition writer. She's done like just pretty much every good show. She's pretty much worked on it. There you go. Thoughts, Chris? Eh, I, I'm I'm I, I'm absolutely on board. I I love Kizuna I and. I really would love to see a show based around the concept of her training up new virtual idols. Am I going to go watch all those virtual idols? No, she's not training anybody. She's just inspired the main girl and she disappeared. <laughs> you know, she's running the, the school the background. Yeah. I'm so done with VTubers. I don't care. <laughs> I really honestly don't care. I'll watch it, but I have zero. I just don't. I loved Kizuna Eye when she first came out, when she was the first of, like, 50 different voices for her. I, I, I joke, I think she's, like, changed voices, like, three times. But I haven't really checked her out since they changed people. So, there you go. Rokudo's Bad Girls. Or Rokudo no Onachachi. This one's Rokudo. Rokudo's a loser, and everyone knows it. He's elected in school, receives malicious look. He is elected in school. Okay. He's elected in school, receives malicious looks from passerby, and only musters the courage to complain in secret with the equally unhappy friends. Seeking to change his life, he desperately uses an, an ancestral artifact transmitting in his 
transmitted in his family for generations. What is a synopsis? A scroll that is able it, to subdue I'm all sure demons. It's better than the than, <laughs> than the freaking PV. So just do your thing. Uh, a scroll that has the ability to subdue all demons. However, in the modern age, it has a different effect. It causes all bad girls to fall in love with him, or fall in love with it. The scroll or him? What is a synopsis? <laughs> This, Watch the PV for a second. This synopsis makes no sense. And then things go ballistic when he meets the delinquent beast on a girl's body. The delinquent beast on a girl's body's girl's body, Hina Wadi Rana, uh, who hopelessly falls deep for him. The who wrote that synopsis? I thought that was from Crunchyroll. I could have swore it said source for Crunchyroll. Anyways, studio satellite sources of manga genres are action, comedy, drama, romance, supernatural. The series composition by Yuichiro Momose, who did Soma Spider, So What, and My Girlfriend's Gal. So there's a good, good series composition writer right there. Um, I'm joking, and it'll be on Crunchyroll. So, thoughts, Chris. How do I make this nice? I don't like the look. Um, it looks really bad. I don't like the style at all. And I got that from the key art, so I had assumed that the show was going to look I bad. Yeah, I don't know. I This one, it, it could be, hopefully it's funny, um, because that <laughs> might save this show, because I'm not excited about it at all. I'm trying to be nice. I really am trying to be nice here. <laughs> I like how literally the synopsis says that the scroll makes people the girl bad girls fall in love with it. And I mean that that the, sounds funny. The, the, the it's obviously from this the trailer they're falling in love with him. So yeah, it's just I I don't like the style at all. I really don't. I mean it, and it's so funny because it's one of those ones where it's like you see it, and it's like this looks. Ugh, I don't like the style of this, but like. And then it'll probably turn out to be the best show ever. I right, exactly. <laughs> it's like, it's like, being like the best show ever, even though I don't like that. I mean, technically, Psyche Kun, I didn't like the style of that, but I ended up yeah. loving that. And I, it's got some of the character designs kind of remind me of some older style comedies that I've loved. Like, let's be perfectly honest, a lot of the old comedies didn't look good. Like Ping Pong Club and stuff was not good looking. But yeah, then it just true. it's just super funny. So and it's going to live or die off is, the, is, the writing. That that's what I was saying about it. Hopefully, it's funny. I that is my biggest hope is that this is a funny as crazy funny show, because otherwise, I will not make it very far in the show because I don't I can't I can't follow that that style at all. That is not a style that I enjoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's maybe one character that I go, ah, uh, she looks okay. She looks normal. <laughs> she <laughs> looks like a normal anime character. <laughs> um. There you go. We'll see. That's uh, Rokudo's Bad Girls. But, um, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I cannot believe this is this far down because, like I said, it's technically an order of popularity. Um, but this is literally, like, my second most anticipated show of the season coming up, which is the Idol Master Cinderella Girls U149. The U149 is, the, as the title refers to, the aspiring idols at the center of it all who stand under... 149 centimeters tall together with the help of the singular squat the similarly squat rookie producer uh these idols aim to make it to the top as the announcement card puts it the story is about growth of little idols and their little producer being done by side game pictures so you know the budget's going to be really good uh sources of manga genres are comedy drama slice of life director manabu Okamoto, who did Mushoku Tensei, Jabba's Reincarnation, and Gamers. So, as I would put it, one of the best recent directors that has hit anime. Because <laughs> I think the the directing work that was done on Mushoku was amazing. And Gamers was really well put together as well. So, um, yeah, this is the reason why you're not getting Mushoku Tensei in spring. It's because he's working on this. <laughs> I mean, they could have had a different director. But I don't want anybody else to touch Mushoku besides him. So... But no, I'm obviously like massively excited for this because my f I think I have to think on it for a bit. 
I think my number one favorite Idol show of all time was obviously Idol Master Cinderella Girls. And if you watch Idol Master Cinderella Girls, you know, in the background, there was all these little cute uh, short girls that were in the background all the time. That's these girls. So we're obviously going to shift perspectives to the U149 group. And with how amazing and how much I loved Cinderella Girls, I'm sure I'm going to love this one. And again, with a really fantastic director behind it and a really amazing studio that just does some really amazing animation. Um, I I could not be more excited. I think they're super cute. There's a lot of really great seiyus in there as well. They're not using like... There's a few of them that are kind of new up and coming seiyus, but there's a lot of them in there that list that are, you know, returning seiyus that have done a lot of fantastic stuff too. So I could not be more excited. I'm, I'm just, yeah, Chris, go. Yeah, The animation <laughs> on the, on the PV absolutely looks, looks fantastic. I, the, I, I have really, really had this kind of, um, love for the idol master uh love live i really really do love it and, and it's one of those frustrating things that i don't have more time i haven't had more time to focus on these it, and and just seeing this pv i'm absolutely excited about it i really w- w- want to watch this one i god knows it, with my luck and 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 these and uh types of shows for some odd reason they're they're the ones that end up getting pushed to the side very quickly um, but I hope I can watch this and, and I there still want to go back and watch all, all the old ones. Chris is going to watch this one because it's lollies is it or because Tom is in it. Yep. <laughs> uh, she is the one that has like the cute little pajama looking hat thing going on figures. Yeah, it's right here. I, I remember there was one in there that was I, I I've seen it remember that was her, but I couldn't remember. So I had to go look it up. But yeah, like. Uh, Sound Euphonium's Kumiko. She's going to be voicing one of the characters as well. But, um, like I said, there's a, there's a few, like, really stand out. There's Yuna, Yuki is a hero. She's voicing one of the characters, so it's another plus for me. Yeah, I can't wait. It, it's, yeah, yeah. I, I've gushed enough. I Yeah, super excited. Super excited. Super excited. So, there you go. Cinderella Girls. U149. Looking forward to that one. Another idol show which is not going to be as exciting for Andrew, but I'll, I'll still check it out, is World Die Stars. The story is set in the world after Die Star stage performers exploded in worldwide popularity in the 20th century. 16-year-old Kokona Otori follows the, her dreams of becoming the World Die Star by auditioning for the serious theatrical group. We end up by Studio Lursh, multimedia project. Director is Yu Kinomi, who did Idol E Pride, so that's kind of a really good solid director for an idol show because i enjoyed idol pride uh series composition by yasuhiro nakanishi who did kaguya-sama love is war so there you go that's good as well interesting the creator is takahiro who did a comic got kill and girls who aim for wildlands so yeah hopefully the characters don't die in this one who knows though yeah it looks like um looks like review kind of stuff right this is the kind of an indication it's giving me. Uh, it looks like regular very stuff. Very possible. Stage um, performance stuff. Definitely doing go, somewhere in between stage performance and idling. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Any interest? Yes, ish. It probably is going to be one of the ones that gets dropped very quickly if it's not doing something spectacular for sure. Yeah, I, I think I've not had too much luck with the review stuff. Um, I keep trying them, and they. They don't really pull it off too well, but I'm always willing to give it another shot. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Nothing really grabbing me based on the synopsis or anything. Just they're doing this. Cool. We'll see you. We'll see you next season. Uh, next one we have is Alice Gear Aegis Expansion. Um, being up by Studio Nomad based on the Alice Gear stuff, I'm guessing. Uh, Stamas or Mecca, and that's pretty much all we know. And we're getting is there, really okay, good. Uh, I was wondering um, if there's any animation whatsoever in it. I seen a train moving in a deserted town. Yeah, we're getting a lot of. Mm. Oh, we got a character. She's moving somewhat. Ish. It's very weird how she's moving. <laughs> what is she doing? She's jumping around a room and walking backwards and sideways. Like is the trailer backwards? Thing. Crab walk. Oh, thing. she's breathing. Oh, she did a thumbs up. There is animation. A confirmed animation. There will be animation. Tan girl. Oh, that's the girl from earlier, because she keeps looking at her what looks like a futuristic 
uh, Nintendo Switch. And she talks and puts her tongue outside of her mouth every time she closes her mouth. I don't know. Is this supposed to be them riding mechas? Oh, is there a shop for girls? Or is that just their names on the side of the characters? Just the, yeah, uh, character voices. Oh, yeah, I see the CV on there. Oh, yeah, we got we got, we got the there Aegis we go. gear. We We've finally got, got the gear. We got gear. We got exoskeleton gear, and they're in space. And there's lots of lines of obvious tracking missiles. And, yes, they're shooting. And then they're back to, to Earth again. Okay. Where there is nobody but them. Maybe, it, maybe, they, maybe dis- they're the only ones in the world. Maybe it's a post-apocalyptic and everybody's gone. Nothing's destroyed. It's very well kept, despite the fact that it's deserted. And she's got a nosebleed. I don't think she had a nosebleed. I think that was a ketchup bottle in her hands. Oh, was it? It looked like a like a circle thing. I don't know. So, yeah, that's Alice Gear Aegis expansion. Um, I, I think we're, we're we'll progressing see. and getting better as we go. It got better. And then we got... uh, It was a very long trailer. (laughs) Two minutes long, so... I don't know. Well, as far as PVs are concerned, this PV did not sell me that show. (laughs) So, we have the synopsis, um, and... There is none. There is none. So, right now, we are in this kind of weird stage of that show exists somewhere. Awkward. (laughs) <laughs> awkward i mean like i said it's probably going to be one of those exoskeleton game slash uh figure slash um model type things that are just that pops up every two seconds so yep ios game and android so there you go there's our mobile game of this the season i thought that we talked about opus colors before maybe it was in one of our discussionals um, yeah, Opus Colors is coming out. What well, color is the world in which you live? Perception Art has been around the art world for 10 years. It is new, completely pre, uh, permeated the world and a vibrant part of people's lives. Kazuya Yamanashi, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Yamanashi, famous artists and creators of Perception Art, recently enrolled in prestigious art institution Einzen High School. Eisen High School, I guess. And his childhood friend, Jun T- uh, Suzuki, dreamed of becoming a perception artist himself. Kazuya also no- uh, had another motivation to rekindle his friendship with another childhood friend who drifted apart after an incident 10 years ago. Uh, Kyo Taka- uh, Takise, a junior, gra- a junior grader at Eisen High School, majoring in perception art, is the son of a well-known grader. This is a really stupid synopsis. Just tell me about these characters going to school. It, it looks like there's some weird perception art, which is like, I don't know, virtual reality colors while singing and performing. Like you're throwing paint around with like VR. And they're a bunch of pretty boys. That's a better synopsis than this thing was. They go to the school where you put on VR and you fling around virtual paint. And they're all pretty. Um, Studio C Station, source is original, genres are sci fi. Director is Shunsuki Tada, who did Kuroko no Basuke and Legend of Galactic Heroes. What a poor shift for him. <laughs> what happened, Tada? <laughs> um, okay. Pretty Boys with VR and. It's actually augmented reality, it looks like, actually. Yeah, augmented reality. I. It, it... I don't know. I this the concept of it makes it, the this is the frustrating thing. It's 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 one of those that the concept of it makes me want more than what it obviously is going to give me. Um, going through a school for throwing virtual paint does not inspire yeah, me to watch it. So you got to have some really good character yeah, writing. That that's that's <laughs> exactly. I it's like the bringing augmented reality into this it makes me immediately want something where they're digging into the idea of augmented reality kind of like uh uh the show that you really like um denki guy or whatever um <laughs> yeah. i can't remember the name of the I show. Dropped that show huh i dropped that show 
What was the name of the one where they had the augmented reality and the, the viruses were attacked? Oh, Dino Coil. Dino Coil. I thought you were actually thinking of a Cell World. I'm like, yeah, I didn't watch the Cell I didn't finish the Cell World either. Well, something like, like uh, Dino Coil actually digs into the idea of augmented reality affecting the real world. And stuff is something like that where you're actually bringing in new um new uh technology it immediately drives you to want to have something where you're digging into thought processes involved with that so if that's not doing that in this show which uh, it doesn't seem like it's going for that it looks like it's really just going for the idea of of pretty pretty boys wearing goggles that's not working for me oh one grab the other one's wrist <laughs> where it would be interesting if it was something something to the effect that one did of, too why do they keep grabbing each other's wrists sorry i guess if they're the artwork is um somehow kind of how what they could do with the artwork i don't know i did nothing about this one is working for it looks right like now. it's very pretty boy bait because it's pretty just, boy it just based on how they're interacting with each other a lot of the emphasis on when they touch another one on the chin or on the the chest it's like it just seems like that's the focus Here's pretty boy Porsche. idol show yeah. they just get to make pretty paint 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 fly around the screen every once in a while so, there you go there you go that's Opus what it is colors and our last new show for the coming season is To Sochu Great Mission. Uh, this is a series that is set in the future where humanity had migrated to the moon due to Earth's climate change. Um, it will incorporate original elements unique to the anime, such as human drama and survival, and will feature a diverse field at blurs, countries, and eras, uh, such as Shibuya and Edo period era in London. It's basically there was a TV series where it's like a like a survival game and they're just making it into an anime that's set on the moon where environments are built and they run from um, agents like in MIB, I guess. And they're all CGI. Ugh. Yeah, the, I, I, the, the CGI Ugh. was. Ugh. And I think he's trying to parkour and it doesn't look good. <laughs> he jumped on something that looked OK. <laughs> So there you go. Um, a low budget uh, rush through a city for, by CGI monsters chasing the or CGI uh, uh, men in black chasing after them, and apparently a Godzilla. There's a Godzilla in the background too. So I have no interest in this, but we'll see. It could be, it it could be good. I guess the I best know. show ever. Watch Andrew come back in three three weeks and say it. I don't know what all of the current delayed shows in winter will go into spring. I do know that Kubo is supposed to come back. Um, Near Automata is going to just continue on into the season. I think they delayed Cecilia and Pastor Lawrence because of that. Just assumption. Um, I think Misfit of Demon King Academy is supposed to continue or restart next season. I know that they were rerunning their first six episodes. And I wasn't sure if they were going to just restart in spring, but... There's a lot of shows delayed this season that I'm not sure what all are going to restart in that season. I think, like I said, Kubo is, I think, the only one that was 100% confirmed to restart. So keep that in mind. Our returning series, we have Demon Slayer. Kimitsu no Yaiba is coming back. Are you excited, Chris? Sure. Yeah? Yeah. It's the Swordsmith Village arc. Um, I My opinion on this one, I I really love the first season of Demon Slayer. Um, I think the second season, besides the animation, was just a very shrug show. So I'm really hoping that Swordsmith arc kind of re-sparks my love for the series. I know it's going to visually look good. It's always going to look good. Um, I'm always going to love Nezuko. But we'll see. We'll see if, uh, again, it really does kind of turn it around for me with the second season. But, um, yeah, that's, that's, that's coming. Apparently there's supposed to be a really naughty scene with one of the girls. So we'll see if they actually animate that. Uh, and we get more Nezuko being super strong. I think this trailer is just literally just recapping everything, isn't it? Yeah, I, I have it. really missed this show. Oh, there we I, go. Um, the next location is, like, at the very end of the trailer, it shows a sword. And the two characters he's going to be hang- hanging out with. Which, yeah. Pigtail's girl supposed to be in an Audi scene. Onsen scene. We'll see if they actually animate it. I, I really, like I said, I, I've, I've missed the show and I, I really can't wait to see some more of it. Um, I, it's, it's a story that I really do just want 
just more of. I just want them to go crazy and just go go full uh, Black Clover on it. And instead of doing this on and off every once in a while. No, don't Black Clover. Keep the animation up, you football. <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to him. Shh, don't listen to him. The same with Dr. Stone. I've really enjoyed my in, that show. So, I mean... Yeah, Dr. Stop. Stone's coming back. Good segue, Chris. <laughs> It's Dr. Stone, The New World, part one. They took away my best girl in a box and gave me Dr. Stone. So, of course, I'm going to start talking about the, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, this, this has got a part two, so apparently it's going to be a two-core season, the third season of Dr. Stone. Uh, TMS is still working on it, so. I still have to watch that little, oh, yay, because I'm a bad, I'm a bad Dr. Stone fan. Um, I've always been kind of the type that I don't go out of my way to tell people to watch Dr. Stone, but I always enjoy it. Like, I don't, I'd never figured out why. It's just a fun show. So, it's never like a personal, like, 10 out of 10 favorite, but I always, I always really enjoy it. So, uh, I'll be looking forward to more of that. Uh, Toei Kawa, Tony, Toei Kawa, Tony Kawa, Over the Moon for You season two is coming, Chris. Are you excited for your, why I have a wife yeah. show? <laughs> It's it's goofy cutesy. I it's fine. I I I'm does he still what, 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 what? Even at the end of the first season, he he's, he doesn't. Whoa, 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 what? He just he's over. He's still doing it. Holy he's crap! Overly stimulated. Oh my gosh! Season he's two. Overly he's overly stimulated. Still unable to she be around so her. So adorable. <sighs> and he just, I can't he's, stand he's that kind of character. Stimulated by her. That's the only reason I fell off it. I just I don't know why I'm in a mood where I just can't stand the whoa, 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 whoa type of characters. So it 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 is. I don't blame you. It it that's a type of character I don't much care for. But if if the girls can carry it, I'll, I'll ignore them. True, true. Oh my gosh, they're getting super lewd in this trailer. How did this even end up on YouTube? <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have stickers all over the screen. But yeah, she's super cute. I I did want to get back to it. I might. I might go back and see if I can stomach this time, but we'll see. But, um, yeah, Tony Kawa, Over the Moon for you, coming back for the second season. Super excited for the next one. Yes, Konosuba, an explosion in this wonderful world, is coming out, and I cannot wait. More Megaman, a show devoted to Megaman, which I think is great. Um, but basically, it's Megaman's story. The Crimson Magic Clan members Megaman and Union are at the top of their class, but they still have a lot to learn. Union begins learning advanced magic, but Megaman has gone down a different path, the path of explosion magic. Despite being warned of the limited uh, the limited usefulness, Megaman believes explosion magic is the way for her to become a great, voluptuous wizard, and she won't be convinced otherwise. Yeah, the trailer's full of a magic school with a ton of Megamans. <laughs> it's like they're all the same outfits. I'm like, it's tons of Megamans! <laughs> But no, there's only one Megaman. Um, she was inspired by somebody that did a massive explosion, so she wants to do a massive explosion. So there you go. I can't wait. More Megaman's great. Studio Do Drive will be working on it rather than Studio Dean. So that's a that's a I don't think plus you're for a genius me. after all. It's because I don't really like uh, Dean. I know that's a hot take, but I mean Dean did some really good stuff with animation on the series, but I've never liked the. The overly goofy style of it. I mean, it worked great for the comedy beats, but it was the non-comedy beats that I was a little bit like, eh. So. This, this is one of those things that I absolutely, uh, Megaman and uh, Union, I've, I absolutely love those characters. So getting yeah. an entire show based around those two are absolutely, I'm absolutely on board. I love it. I, I think my only concern is that the side characters will take too much attention because I don't know who these guys, I mean, the side characters could turn out to be really good. But hopefully they don't take too much attention away from Mega Man and Union, because they're the they're the stars. Obviously, they've always been the stars. Always. I mean, I liked a lot of the other characters, but those were those were easily no, one of my. It's favorites. always Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there you go. That's uh, kind of super an explosion on this wonderful world. Another world where my smartphone's coming back. Chris, are you excited? Yes. This is another one that I was. I don't know why I was thinking of actually getting caught up on. I don't know why I might just like blitz through it with like, I don't know, 50 times speed and just to act like I watched it and just completely be honest about it. This is, this is one of those that's just a no holds barred. It is what it is. It wears it on its nose and it says, 
I am a dumb generic Isek. I I'm a dumb. Well, I wouldn't say I, I'm a dumb generic. I'm a pure harem with with Isekai elements. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. I got you. I got you. But yeah, let's uh check that out. Ancient Magus Bride is coming back, Chris. That's that's happening. Uh, with Studio once again not doing this season. Um, they did. Uh, Studio Kafka is going to return for the second season. They were doing the OVAs. Which do you only did the first season, but um, yeah, Ancient Magus Pride for the fans of that one. I will definitely be checking it out. I don't remember if I watched all the OVAs, so I'm gonna have to go back and and double check. I I watched the first one. It it seemed interesting. I know for sure I watched the first one. Um, it seemed like they were going in an interesting direction. They were really playing heavy on the introducing uh, basically a new. I wouldn't say they're a faction. It's just a group that is a part of the world. So mm-hmm. we're really digging into that. Yeah, I remember all that stuff. So there you go. Ancient Magus Bride, second season. Ranking of Kings. That's happening. Now, big caveat this is Ranking of Kings, treasure, the treasure chest of courage. I don't know how many episodes it's going to be. I, they originally said it was going to be like just a side story or something like that, that it wasn't going to be very long. But they're now listing it as a TV series, so apparently it's going to be more than just a single or so episode. So I'm curious how many episodes this will end up being. But give it, <laughs> give it. I'll take, I'll take more Boji. Um, I hope it's, I hope it's a long series. I, I, I need more Rankin of Kings, please. Now, thank you. So. Yeah, there's a there's a reason why both me and Andrew absolutely screamed from the rooftops. If you have not watched this, go and watch it because you're gonna want to be ready for when this show when this this part comes out. Now it's curious because some of this stuff looks like it's a lot of backstory stuff again. Maybe it'll get more into the the past and stuff, the war and everything like that. So that'd be interesting. Maybe get maybe get um, Oaken's story get more of Oaken's story. I, I, I want Oaken's redemption story so bad. I want more Oaken. He's such a great character. Gosh, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Anyways, Kuma, 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 Bear. Punch. Uh, second season of Kuma, 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 Bear. Um, I'm actually excited for this one. I, I kind of equate this a lot to, um, something like the, uh, I've spent all my points in defense, girl, Bofuri, but I really like this one. So the cute bear outfit, the the OP bear outfit punches and stuff. I love it. So I'll be excited to see that one come back. I think Chris was enjoying it, too. Yeah, love it. It's a cute girl in a bear outfit that take care of a cute lolly. Why with, not? With uh, that takes care of cute girls and yeah. has yeah. cute girls that like her. So, yeah. Well, she puts her to work, too. She she at least puts the lolly to work. She says she has to tear up. She has to cut up all of her stuff because she her parents, I think, was like a taxidermist or something like that so she cuts up all the meat and stuff she's a meat processing lolly anyways <laughs> Aiden Zero is coming back for a second season uh, cool me and Chris haven't really gotten to that one yet so Gundam's uh, Mobile Suit Gundam The Witch from Mercury second season I could not be more excited oh, sweat to high five I still have to catch up on sweat that. to high five I can't wait sweat to high five yeah. Well, apparently she only li- the only thing that she likes is uh, tomatoes. So because mm-hmm. the entire world seems to have birthday. gotten obsessed and birthday. with her Happy birthday. No, the only thing that she does is tomatoes. Yes, There's tomatoes. nothing else except for and high fives. her and tomatoes and high fives. No, she only likes tomatoes. A little that, raccoon that, that, look raccoon at that the likes internet, high fives. The internet, Suleta, ha- there's tomatoes everywhere around her. She doesn't like anything else but tomatoes and high fives. But no, super pumped for that. Um, they left it on a really bad note, and I need a second season. So, yeah. And Birdie Wings, speaking of bad notes. I'm actually glad about that. <laughs> I'm glad that that's the show is coming back. I really do After feel a delay like from it winter, left. it's here. It, it felt like it got left off at a, at a kind of disappointing spot. With tomatoes and high fives? No, there's no tomatoes in this one. There's <laughs> only Sueta and, and, and... There's no Sueta? There's a Sueta in this yeah. one? No, there is none. Is oh. She, these girls don't like tomatoes just yakuza golfing yeah yakuza golfing underground golfing with with well they're billions obsessed of billions with of dollars other. they're obsessed with each golf other. carts yeah and i don't think anybody has really done lots of fan art on them so tokyo mew mew new second season 
I could not be more happy for my Tokyo Mew Mew to come back. I, I will never sell people on it, uh, but I really love it. It's got nostalgia points for me, so I'm happy to see it come back. I'm going to assume it's going to be on High Dive since they have the first season, but I don't think it's been fully announced yet. So Mixed Misei story second season, so fans of Mix. I, I, I wanted to get into that one a long time ago, but I just didn't. I, I do. I've heard good things about it, so... And finally, Uma Musume Pretty Derby Road to the Top is coming out. Um, this, I think, is going to be the one that's going to be on YouTube. So check that out if you are a fan of Uma Musume Pretty Derby. I don't know if it'll be su a subtitle, but it's still being done by Sa Saigon Pictures. So that's, some um, again, very good budget stuff. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see when it comes out if they actually subtitle it. That'd be a good if they do. So, And that's it. That there was no shorts, so no shorts this season. But again, um, keep in mind that anything above could possibly get tossed into the shorts later on. Um, the continuing series from the winter series season will be Vinland Saga second, uh, going into a second core for 24 episodes. And Boko to Roboko will be going for 20 episodes. Nobody picked up Boko no Robo to Roboko. I noticed that. I was like, the like at some point in the season, I'm like, wait, what happened to Boko no to Roboko? I was going to try it out, but I don't see it anywhere, so sadness but it is what it is that that unfortunately does happen we do get shows even now that just nobody picks up and it could just be a factor they don't really want they don't want it to be localized maybe nobody want to license it out or maybe they were asking too much for it we don't know unfortunately so um other than that for movies we have psychopaths providence uh princess principal is getting a third movie they keep making princess principal movies <laughs> they just keep coming out what else? Idolish is getting another movie. OVAs, of course, we have that one for Snafu going to come out for the, um, I believe, the video game. Yeah, it was a, the video game is going to have a, a Blu-ray for it. So keep that in mind. A Azure Lane's getting a Queen's Order OVA. Um, Nijion Animation Special. So the the short the Nij Nijikasaki Love Live Chibi version short series is getting a three episode unaired for the blu-ray box so keep an eye out for that if you're a fan of love live and i think that's it i think that's it are you excited chris pretty did, much did you write down anything nope <laughs> do you see a pen and paper we just don't me. ever we don't ever remember anymore um yeah i like i said before i think my big top picks is oshinoko um the shinimigami girl i i'm really excited for that one the uh, Galaxy Next Door, uh, Tengoku Dike Heavenly, what was it called? I had the English title earlier. Heavenly Delusions or something like that. Uh, Insomniacs After School, Loving Yamada, level 99. Um, what was that other one that I was looking at? Uh, Heavenly Delusion, that's what it was. I think those are the big ones for me right now. Dead Mount Death Play, I'm like hesitant on, but. It's, again, the Bacano writer, so I'm pretty excited for it. What God Does in a World Without Gods, I think, is a huge one for me as well. And U149, Idol Masters. Yeah. And obviously returning Mega Man and Ranking of Kings and Gundam is a big ones for me, so. Yeah, for me, it's pretty much the... Um... I... I Oishina Ko for sure. Um the um the Insomniacs. The that one. The uh Shinigami girl. The Oh my first the friend sweetness, or my first weird friend or whatever it's called. The sweetness and lightning. Girl at Galaxy Next Door. Yeah. I love it. Chris's weird names he gives stuff is always so great, isn't it, guys? We we're always anticipating what is Chris going to call all this stuff. <laughs> Just give him all and weird names. And probably Cinderella Girl Lollies edition. Cinderella Girls Lollies editions, yes. <laughs> <laughs> CGI orchestra show. What about your your Beauty and the Beast? Eh, I, I, beast. I am I am what's, interested what's its in name? It. <laughs> Not tell of outcasts. <laughs> Not tell of outcasts. <laughs> uh, deadpan girl meets the the beast king. Yeah, gotcha. there you go. There you go. 
you're not excited for the new Pokemon? What about the the Lolly Goddess the destroys Lolly Goddess, the yeah. Isekai world? Yeah, I I am I am very very What's excited the name? about that one. But the Lolly Goddess <laughs> destroys the Isekai world. <laughs> I, I, uh, the, the, uh, Lolly Goddess saves the dark world. I don't know. There you go, the dark world. <laughs> what about R- Rokudo's bad girls? Uh, what do you think is going to be the hidden gem? Watch it end up being Rokudo's it's bad be girls. Bad, it's, it's totally going to be that one. going to be it. It yeah. just turns out to be if, amazing. If, if, it's going to, if it, if it's good, it's going to be amazing. You know, it will be. There was another one that I was thinking about when I was thinking about like shows that can completely like catch me off guard. It might be skip to loafers because I'm like, I'm very neutral on it. I, w- I think it's going to be great, but it's I'm very, I'm very neutral on it. Yeah, I think that that one has the, the, the best chance to surprise me, um, mostly because I have a feeling that that one could be solid. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those that or the magical destroyers. That could be the other big gem. Because, uh, and the reason why I say that is a show uh, that the, that one doesn't come across to me as anything that it could just be amazing. And what, what usually happens with us with something like that, because we, we did notice that was, I, I, I feel that with super cub where it just looks good. And you're like. I wonder about that. There's one. nothing Why, jumping out. What and it, yeah. You. <laughs> what is what is it about this one that's just going, huh? Who who decided that that one would be a good one to bring to the plate? Why did they? That's a passion project, probably. So I want to I want to say if anything's it was an advertisement for Super Cup, obviously. It was obviously a thing <laughs> for Super Cup. So Super Cup company's like, wait, they made a book about us. Let's <laughs> adapt this thing. But yeah, that's um. That is the spring 2023 anime season. I hope you guys are excited for it. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, running through all of them, um, going through and finding out what's going to be behind it and if it's something you should be excited for. Sometimes a writer or a script writer or a director or the studio in general sometimes can kind of spark an interest, but or just me stumbling over the, the stupid synopsis and you laugh about it, but... Anyways, <laughs> we hope you guys enjoyed this run through and that you guys will stick with us going into the spring season as I will be doing for, we'll do a first impressions podcast. Obviously, we'll do a music podcast episode for the series, as well as if you follow Otaku Spirit on YouTube at YouTube.com slash Otaku Spirit, you can get my first impressions for every single one of these shows as they come out. Sometimes I'll give one episode if it grabs you immediately, I'll cover it. Like Oshinoko, it's going to be a single episode because I got a 90 episode work, a 90 minute episode to work with. But most of them, I'll give one to three episodes and give you my thoughts on it, what it's about, give you some visuals for it, and just talk about it, my thoughts on it. So if you're not already, go to YouTube and uh, search for Otaku Spirit. Not that other one. There's another Otaku Spirit on there. Just go to youtube.com slash Otaku Spirit or go to Otaku Spirit, or go to Otaku Spirit.com and go to the link. I think it'll also be in the description for this podcast. So yeah, check us out there and subscribe. But um, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed this run through of the season and uh, will join us for it. But until then, again, TakuSpear.com, that's where all of our links are. Discord, you can join us there. We have our social media links and ways to support the channel, including Patreon. We greatly appreciate all of our Patreon supporters and those that support us monetarily. And with that said, y'all take care. Oh.